What is up crew? My name is KSM and on today's video, we're going to be talking about how to draw arms from different angles, different positions, and we'll be going over things like the basic shapes, some of the anatomy, as well as some of the interesting funky things that arms can do. Hopefully this will be helpful to you guys. And also if it's your first time here, my name is KSM and I am a Filipino art streamer on Twitch, teaching everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to character design. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made cast Pennsylvania. So if you guys are interested, make sure to follow on Twitch, subscribe, like the video on YouTube, and let's get this one started. So as you guys can see over here, we have here a few references that I've given you guys already. Um, I'm actually, there's, there's technically three references on here. I might've not uploaded it to the discord channel, but there are three references here. Uh, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll re-upload this picture really quick. Uh, but, but all of these basically, and I'll show you, I'll tell you guys real quick to the discord channel, because over here on the discord channel, you'll be able to grab uh, more of these resources. But over here we have the, uh, the, the worksheets that you guys can actually download. These will contain the notes from that we did from last stream, as well as some references that we're going to be looking at today as a little bit of practice. Um, if we have some time afterwards, we'll also just draw some stuff out from imagination. We'll be inventing a few poses and all of that stuff, but I uploaded the new version here with this model as well. So that way you guys can get all three, uh, all three reference uh, pictures here today. So I'll delete this one later. Um, but here I also have stuff from last week's uh, tutorial stuff here that we covered the torso. So if you guys are watching this and it's your first time here, check out my stuff from last week where we actually go really in depth with drawing the torso from front view, back view and side view. So pretty helpful, um, I would say. And, and drawing characters is good to, you know, know how to draw the body. Um, and then last but not least, I have here this cheat sheet, which covers a lot of the skeletal and muscular anatomy, as well as some of the intricate, interesting details details of drawing um, drawing arms so I highly recommend you grab these guys these are free to grab uh, while I am live uh, so just keep that in mind because uh, once I'm once I'm not live these will be gone all right so just just grab them grab them now while you still can all right uh, but anyways let's go ahead now and switch back to this view as we go ahead and uh, draw some things out. I'm, I'm pretty excited to to knock out some some drawings today. I feel like we're going to get some good stuff done. Uh, but yeah, let me just do something real quick. I'm just cleaning up that discord. OK, cool. All righty. Let me also tilt this one back. Uh, let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, welcome to the YouTube video. Yeah, welcome. In. Shout out to everybody who's coming in here. Thank you again, everybody, for typing in. Hi, YouTube. How do we download the reference cheat sheets again? You got to go to the Discord channel. Grab them while they're hot. Yes, sir. That's that's all you got to do. Okay. Um. But yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do this first one here. And the reason why I chose these particular poses, they're not just random poses that I wanted to grab off of Pinterest. I wanted to intentionally grab these poses because I was looking at the positioning of the arms and wanting to kind of show you guys how different arm positions, for example, when the wrist is turned downwards or the wrist is turned upwards, will actually lead to slightly different shapes for the arms. All right. So let's go ahead and tackle this one first. I don't think we've done a back pose drawing like this where the arm is um, flexed downward, all right? And, um, yo. Oh, thank you for the sub, Slow. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's helpful. Um, so yeah, right now I'm just going in and I'm adding in a little bit of the basic forms. Now, again, we're not going over the torso today, so I will be speed running the torso a little bit just so that we can get into talking about the arms and stuff. So if you guys want, like, you know, want to see more about like the torso and stuff, just check out the rest of my videos for that. Um, but for today, just hang tight because we are covering arms today. And so I'm going to be simplifying these things out. Um, and I'm going to be leaving these arms as general mannequin structures. So if you guys weren't there from um, my, my previous streams, basically the first thing that I like to focus on is going to be primarily the, uh, primarily the, uh, the simple shapes first, right? So when it comes to drawing arms, I like to think of the shoulder joint as a sphere because it's pretty flexible and it's kind of similar to how the humerus bone actually connects to that, uh, to that joint there and creates that shoulder joint. Uh, and then the other two are just going to be two, uh, cylindrical forms here. 
the second one the forearm having a little bit more of a taper there and that's mostly because once you get to this portion of the arm it is gonna taper out majority to just being tendon and bone which which we will go over a little bit more later all right all right so yeah let me let me just kind of speed run this one and then i'll talk a little bit about um i'll talk a little bit about some of the things that i'm that i'm seeing here as well so i will i will mention here that if there is something that's important about the back muscle it's going to be this uh the scapula right here and the reason why is because there's actually a good majority of of shoulder muscles and even some arm muscles that actually connect uh to the scapula particularly i'm talking about all the stuff on the shoulder there the infraspinatus the teres major uh, as well as i believe the tricep one of the triceps connects to the back of the scapula i'm i'm pretty sure so interestingly enough the scapula is actually part of the arm as well as being part of the back so it's it's kind of one of those major connectors which i think is just good to know uh in general right so this is the the scapula also being um being the shoulder blade so the, the the less medical term for it is called the shoulder blade okay all right but let me go ahead and lower the opacity here and again we're just going to be focusing primarily on the arms here yes humorous always always humorous <laughs> you guys you guys make the same joke every time i say the humorous bone you guys are like oh that's so funny so humorous i'm like bro it's it's just the bone it's just the name of the bone but yes now you're right it is oh interesting choice for the name uh but all right let's go ahead here and let's kind of just draw out i'm just going to draw out again all these muscle groups and um i'll talk about them just so that way you guys know uh but i'm not going to go super in depth uh with talking about the muscles right so if you're like whoa 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 why are you going so fast don't worry i will slow down there uh, for the rest of the muscle groups but right now i'm just laying out the trapezius muscles and again the trapezius muscles are going to connect to the upper portion here of the scapula which we just talked about um, they're going to go all the way down and kind of uh, they actually kind of wrap around over this section but this is mostly tendon over here so uh, just kind of keep that mind keep that in mind there and then here we'll have a little bit of overlap from the neck trap muscles actually should go uh, over there okay cool 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 all right but yeah um for those of you who are watching live today how are you guys doing you guys chilling so far week week is strong week is meh how's the week been there you go look at this see we got those muscles coming in nice and hot horrendous damn what really Sorry to hear about that. Oof. <laughs> I feel I had a I would say I had a kind of med week last week. And then I think this week there's been a lot of rain here in California. Uh a lot in a lot in Southern California. I don't know about northern. I'm sure there's some in Northern California too, but um it's been a lot of rain. Okay, I think after I lay this one out. I think we'll be good and and then we'll just jump into talking about the uh the shoulder muscles because i do i do want to go over that from this angle i don't think we talked about it all too much yesterday we kind of just put it in the back burner and so i'd love to talk about it uh, a little bit um that's good to hear Oren. i'm doing well yeah oh going to a board game conference huh that seems that seems like something i'd want to go to I, I i play a fair number of board games with my friends and uh i don't know I, i'll be down to check out a, a board game conference that seems kind of sick all right so i'm just laying out again the the muscle groups here all right um when you're drawing out a character you don't actually have to draw all of these things out just keep that in mind um we're drawing it out here for the sake of educational uh you know educational demo but i might actually erase it maybe we'll do that maybe let's just maybe let's just keep it nice and simple today so let me go ahead and do that now actually okay boom 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 again we haven't drawn the arms yet so we'll get to the arms in just a, in just a bit all right um did you ever draw not safe for work stuff 
um on stream no because <laughs> I'd, I'd get banned for that but i mean off stream I've, i mean i've drawn my fair share of, of naked people but nothing that's like too explicit honestly um not necessarily my style so just not something i have had much interest in in doing but but i mean i've drawn my fair share of yeah naked naked peeps Uh, let's see here. Will you talk about different body shapes, like more overweight and super skinny people at one point? Yes. So we will definitely be going more in depth about that. Um, we've actually done a little bit of that already um, on this stream, uh, day seven of my boot camp, where I actually talk about different body types and how different body types um, kind of, well, how body fat will actually create some of these different body types, right? Um, and, and actually on, t on Thursday stream, I'm going to have a few references here of different body types as well. So talking more about like, how do you draw an arm that isn't super muscular or even on today's stream, um, how do you draw a arm that's really skinny with, with, uh, this person here. So I do try to have a few examples here and there throughout my boot camps where we don't just draw only muscular people. Um, I usually only draw muscular people for the sake of showing you guys the clear visibility of the, mu of the muscles. But once you, once we've gone over the muscles, then we'll go over more, uh, general, you know, general references and general use cases and stuff. Because I think at the end of the day, I'm sure a lot of you guys don't want to only draw muscular people. Maybe, maybe you have a phase where you draw muscular people all the time, but for the most part, you know, you want to be able to draw all kinds of people. So um, short answer to your question is yes, we will be going over that at some point, but not until we finish all the fundamentals of the anatomy and all the forms and stuff that we, uh, you know, we got to cover for the, for the human body. Once we have all those building blocks in place, everything from the head to the legs, to the, to the hands and the feet and all that stuff, uh, then I think we'll talk about how to mix those things up. Right. Cause I think it's too hard. I think it's too hard to go over. Um, all of those different topics while also introducing how to draw the different body types. Cause I think like that's a very advanced topic. Personally, I think drawing different body types and different types of characters requires you to learn how to draw a baseline for a character first, right? So baby steps, we'll get there though. Um, and I, and I appreciate your, <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm. Let me know if that made any sense, by the way. Again, you know, this is just how I think about teaching this thing. There's probably a lot of different ways to teach it. Um, and I think part of the part of the good thing, but maybe also part of the maybe not so good thing is that because I'm teaching it on Twitch, I don't necessarily know my audience. I don't know the skill level of everyone here versus like if I was teaching this at a school or as a course, like an online course, I could say like, hey, I'm only teaching advanced topics and the 20 people who are signed up for this topic expect it to be a very advanced topic, you know, whereas here on Twitch, it's like some of you guys might be beginners and some of you guys might be professionals. And so the range, um, I do have to kind of account for that range as well. Cause you can imagine if I only did advanced topic stuff, it's probably not going to be that interesting to a lot of people or not, or maybe not as interesting, but it won't be as applicable to a lot of people. So yeah. Uh, and thank you for the follows, Resbit and also Mo Rice Cracker. Appreciate that, guys. Thank you, thank you so much for the follows. But all right, so we've got here for the most part the um, the the drawing for the back. And again, these are more like a diagram ish drawing. Um, but what I can do is let's actually go over a little bit here of the um, anatomy of the shoulder and all of that stuff because I do think that is actually going to be uh, that's going to play a pretty big role in in um, and in, in how we draw the arms, right? So again, I'm leaving the arms here kind of uh, open right now because we're not, we're not there yet, right? But now we are there. So let's, let's talk about it. All right. So interestingly enough, we got here a few kind of cool arm muscles and stuff that we can talk about. Let me just, hold on. I do want to clean this one up a little bit. Do, do, do. All right, let me clean this one up just so that way we have kind of a, Nice little shape there for pants. Okay. 
Alrighty, alrighty. So let's talk about that shoulder. What the heck is going on there? So when it comes to the shoulder, um, again, so maybe before then, let's talk a little bit about the simplified shape here of the shoulder and why some of why am I using some of these simplified shapes? Now, what's really cool about using this kind of ball shape here for the shoulder is if you take a look at your own arm, you actually have a really good range of mobility with your shoulder. You can do a lot of things. Um, and you're pretty much not limited to your range of motion, um, except you are limited here on the upper range. And the reason why is because the shoulder joint does go under a set of bones here. Uh, you have here the acromion process over here. You have here the cor coracoid process, I think. Um, and then you have the scapula and, and also the collarbone kind of creating the shoulder girdle here, right? And so having this kind of uh, girdle right here actually limits your range upwards a little bit, but not too much. You guys can kind of see. Um, but in terms of like lower range, front range, back range, all of that stuff, it's pretty good at, um, at adding a lot of that flexibility. And so having a good, you know, kind of shape for that is a good, uh, I think a good kind of first start. Now I use here a cylindrical shape for, um, for the upper arm just to kind of keep it simple. But as I've shown you guys in other demos here, when it comes to drawing the arm, you can use whatever gestural shapes you want to really convey uh, drawing the arm in different angles, different perspectives, all of that stuff. So let me actually bring, I'll bring this over to the other side here so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about while I draw, right? Uh, and, and if you guys missed this last stream, this was basically these like one minute, two minute gestures that I showed you guys of how you can draw arms from like different angles and stuff using simplified forms and shapes, right? Using this kind of zigzag pattern. And so uh, we'll, we'll talk about all that later, but right now I wanna get over kind of the, the basic shapes first. Um, but hey, uh, welcome in everybody. Thank you for the follow, Rizugi as well. And thank you for the quenching my thirst. All right, so let's talk about shoulder muscles. So here at the, uh, yo, thank you for the sub, Jai. Appreciate that. That spooked me, I was like, yo, what is that? All right, so let's talk a little bit about shoulder muscles and how those muscles connect to uh, the arm and also how they connect to, I guess, the rest of the body in terms of just the general uh, the general shape there, right? So the first one, I think we've, I think we've talked about this a, a good amount and I wonder if we already have a diagram here. Oh, I think it's on another, uh, it's on another sheet that we did the other day. But anyways, um, so we have here a, a, a range of muscles, but I'm only gonna talk about the ones that I care about for now. Now, one of the big ones here, and you'll kind of see it on this guy, is gonna be a muscle called the infraspinatus, as well as the teres minor. And these muscles are actually gonna wrap around and connect to that joint right here. That's gonna be that humerus bone that we talked about, okay? Uh, then underneath that, you're gonna have that teres major right here, and that's gonna kind of push in into the arm there. You can actually see that on this guy right here because he's kind of pushing his arm back. Um, so interestingly enough, you'll see some of that volume being compressed there. And then um, last but not least, on this kind of scapula section, on the top here ridge of the, uh, on the, uh, what's it called? That, that scapula there, you're actually gonna have that deltoid. And the deltoid, I usually do, so if the, if the scapula is like right here, we'll do like a third of it here for the trap muscles. And then we'll bring in this portion right here for the for the deltoids, right? So the deltoids, I'm gonna show you guys here. So this is the shoulder, shoulder muscle, right? I'm just gonna simplify it out. And then I want you guys to keep in mind that the shoulder muscle is gonna be kind of a, an interesting one where it has kind of four planes, I would say, one, two, three, four, roughly about four planes um, with the, the side planes here. So the one that we're seeing is gonna be this kind of, uh, there's the posterior, anterior, and then there's gonna be this lateral plane on the side here, and then there's gonna be this top plane over here for that transition. But you can imagine that the shoulder uh, basically is gonna be connecting here in between where that trap, where the trap muscles are that we drew earlier, um, but also kind of denoting the, uh, it's also gonna be connecting to the scapula, the acromion process, and then the clavicle on the front side, right? So uh, if you guys, if these are all terms that you're like, huh, what's going on? Don't worry too much about it. Instead, I would just think of the shoulder as kind of this, uh, this kind of like cap-like shape here that you can just pop over the arm. So you can imagine it like, we'll do it like this. Kind of like this uh, the shape right here that you can just kind of put on the arm there, uh, like this. 
and and that kind of is the general like very very simplified shape there of the shoulder right kind of like this boxy shape here it tapers out a little bit so if you look at it from like a front view it'll kind of look like this a little but if we're talking about the actual anatomy uh, again it's it's comprised of three kind of major sections and these three major sections are going to be uh kind of like a wider a wider chunk right here uh then you're going to have these smaller chunks which kind of uh wrap into that form just a little bit more so a little bit there of um shoulder shoulder action okay so there but i'll draw the more complex version here uh let's see here when did you start your art journey i mean what was your age i mean i i've been drawing since i was young but i always tell people that it was more my art journey didn't start until about two years ago when i decided to start drawing again after six years because i stopped drawing basically after a bit of time because i didn't think i was going to be an artist anymore so i thought there's no point in investing time so i only started drawing again two years ago and then it took me about a year to practice and build my fundamentals to um eventually start working full-time as an artist and then eventually start working in the animation industry um so it took me a, a little bit of time if that makes any sense uh but thank you for all the follows today guys uh general grape ink and uh where did you learn your anatomy yeah so that's a great question so i mean a lot of my anatomy uh learning has come from a bunch of different places from uh from youtube to books to even some classes that i've taken back when i did go to art school uh, back when i was at art center one of the first things they taught me was actually anatomy uh which was interesting but so a lot of different places and i've and i think throughout my time as an artist i've learned anatomy very very uh, very different uh throughout very different dif uh various times sorry different occasions there you go and each time i've learned it i've learned a little bit more if that makes any sense um you know you kind of learn more and more each time because you're kind of like you're like oh i totally ignored that that small detail the other day right um let's see here um age isn't a determining factor in art success so you don't have to worry about that the other things are though i do i do agree that age is not a, a huge factor all right um and um someone earlier had a comment about they said they they've been drawing for two years and they still feel like they're not being successful um are they a failure um the answer is no i think everyone moves at their own pace and i don't think that you should compare yourself to anybody um myself included in terms of where you are with your art journey because that is actually part of the big reason why i quit art in the first place when i was uh, younger was because i felt like i was comparing myself to my peers in art school i was comparing myself to people on instagram i was comparing myself to even even myself saying like hey i used to be so quick to learn things why is it so much of a struggle for me to learn things now really quick guys i do run ads on my stream every hour and one's gonna be running right about now by the way so if you do get an ad thank you again for sticking around for the ad break they do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do uh what i'm doing out here um so thank you if you do get hit with an ad um, if you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing, though I'm sure you guys probably can't hear that at this point. Oh, <laughs> uh, shoot. Do you guys think it was too late? Did I, did I mess up here? I might have, uh, I might, it might have been too late. They probably got hit with the ad and didn't hear anything that I said. It's okay. Um, and hey, thank you for the follow, Angie. Appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I would say, again, going back to that topic, I, I, I really don't think that that your age and how long you've been drawing really plays a factor because again um i prior to my two years of, of of getting back into art when i was younger i drew a lot i drew a lot but i didn't have any direction with what i was doing right i was i was just drawing whatever i could um i was trying to sometimes i was trying to draw stuff to try to please other people and get likes on instagram sometimes i was too afraid to get out of my comfort zone and draw things that i knew i needed to learn to get better and instead i kept drawing the same things over and over again right and so i would say your age and your how long you've been drawing actually don't have too much to do with it and more so being able to have direction but also being able to be critical of yourself as well too 
Um, I think I think one of the things that was really difficult for me early on in my career or early on in my art journey, I should say, was the was the challenge of being able to look at my art and judge it in a way that was constructive criticism and not me just being like, wow, I'm so good. I have nothing to learn. Or on the other spectrum, which is, uh, wow, I'm complete trash. I should give up drawing altogether. Put an F in the chat, guys, if you've ever had those thoughts with your own art, right? I think this happens way too often, especially in beginner artists, where we're so quick to put ourselves down and, and compare ourselves to other people uh, right away, right? Like, it's it's very quick. Um, do I know Tom Fox? Heck yeah, I know Tom. Tom is great. I love Tom's stuff. Um. We've actually talked about using um I've I've used Tom's uh stuff as as reference for how I how I break down some of the forms um out here on my streams. I think he does a really good job of explaining the forms and structures of things. But all right, um let's see here. Uh what were we talking about? We had an ad break earlier. So let me go ahead and I guess we'll we'll come back in here. All right, so um going back now, um Right now, I'm just mostly laying out the muscle groups here for you guys. So let me go back in here and we'll talk about them now. I just wanted to wait because I didn't want you guys to, you know, get overwhelmed or, or miss out for a little bit. You went out for a minute. Who are we paying respect for? You're, you're pressing F for yourselves, for the, <laughs> for the fallen people who've, who've ever, um, what did I say earlier? If you've ever, if you've ever, um, looked at your art and and told yourself you were complete trash and that you should give up because your art sucks. All right. So so the other thing that I wanted to talk about going back here to the uh, anatomy and all that stuff is um right now I'm laying out here a couple muscle groups and you can kind of see how I'm taking this simplified shape that we had earlier and I'm just kind of carving it out, right? I'm adding in more definition, more muscle. And that's kind of what's interesting about using these simplified shapes is once you understand, uh, once you understand how the basic shapes work, being able to add the muscles on top really is just a matter of practice, right? And again, I'll teach you guys all the terms here. I just want to draw them out first for you guys, uh, so that way we can have you know something to work with, and then from there, we'll um, I'll talk about all the muscle groups here, okay? Uh, but right now I'm just drawing the forearm out and you can kind of see already um, it's coming together, right? So we had here this like boxy structure earlier, but now we're actually we're actually getting somewhere with a little bit of a structure looking pretty decent. Also, let me give my let me give a little quick intro of myself for those of you guys who uh, might be new here and you're kind of curious about who I am and stuff. Um, if, if it is your first time here, welcome in. My name is Kasem. I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, to all things related to character design. And I also currently work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, right now, I'm prepping to work as a character designer on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, you guys like my dog who is uh, sleeping over there, um, make sure to leave a follow if you're watching from YouTube and stuff. Uh, like and subscribe the video. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's, today's stream. Thank you for the follows, by the way. Konarkyo. Uh, Konar Yokyo. I can't say your name right. Sorry. Um, Konar Konar Yoko. Konar Yoko. Um, did I get the job? Yes, I I I got it. Um, I got it a while back. Um, actually, I've been working. I've been working there for strangely enough a bit of time. It's actually crazy. It's time. Time flies. But yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. It's a a lot of hard work. Um, a lot of uh, patience. I think and learning through various jobs and developing my skills. And the journey's not over yet. I always tell people, people are always like, wow, you, you're living the dream. You're working for the studio you want to work for and stuff. But there's actually so many things that I want to do. Um, and so this is, a, this is for me, like, not to say that I'm, I'm, I'm putting my achievements down. It's more just like reminding myself that, yes, I've made it this far, um, but there's still so much more uh, to do and, and to go. And so I can't, I can't ease up now. You know what I'm saying? And you guys shouldn't either. And this is kind of why I stream to help you guys out and help you guys push to achieve whatever, uh, whatever goals it is that you guys want to achieve in your, in your art career. 
you know? How's it going, um, Powered? Welcome back in. Um, yeah, there's always still so much to learn, 100%. And uh, thank you for the follow, YV, and everybody else who's coming in here. Sheesh. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I hope you guys are enjoying today's stream. I know we've been covering arms, uh, which I hope is, is an interesting topic. I mean, I think arms in general are an interesting one. Next, next to the face, I think arms are a good like indicator um, for understanding the form and the anatomy because oftentimes when you're drawing characters there's going to be there's a there's going to be a good chance that they're going to be wearing clothing you know like sure there are going to be times where you'll draw shirtless characters right but also there's going to be probably way more times where you'll be drawing more ca uh, characters with more um you know wearing shirts and all of that stuff and so you're not really going to see too much of like for example this back anatomy right instead you'll probably see like a t-shirt here some bunching of folds here that kind of stuff right You'll see all of that stuff here for the character like that. Yeah, I'm sure just me just drawing a quick t-shirt, right? But the arms, you will probably see the arms a couple times. So um, being able to have good arms and understanding of what the heck is going on with arm muscles uh, can actually be a, uh, a great benefit to, to you. So I always, I always tell people, I think arms are very important to, to learn and, and practice and, and be able to kind of mess around with as well. But all right, so let me go ahead and squeeze in here the the other uh, the infrasprenatus and stuff. But I'm gonna I'm just gonna combine these together, and we'll we'll talk about the muscle groups here. I think this is right. Let me double check because the thing is, this muscle that I just drew right now actually lies underneath the it lies underneath the trapezius muscles. I'm pretty sure, and so you're not even gonna see this muscle on the shoulder. But I want to add it anyways. I think that's right because it goes under there. Yeah, it goes under the deltoid. So there, there's a muscle I just drew right here. You're not going to see it. But for the sake of drawing in all the shoulder muscles, why not? Your goal is to become Jason. Me too. My goal is to become Jason, not Ksem. Uh, Moonbeb, uh, welcome into the Ksem crew. And and for those of you guys who did follow today, I I'm, I'm curious to know um, how you guys found my stream. Was it from the recommended section? Was it from uh, was it from the front page? Was it from YouTube? Possibly. I don't know. Did a friend tell you about me? Was it a raid and I just missed it? I'd love to know how you guys came across uh, my stream today. All right, and let me just uh, do a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Okay, um, so let's talk about, hmm, let's talk about the, do, 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 the muscles, all right? So I'm going to lay out the muscles here, and then we'll get into just drawing out more simplified shapes because, uh, again, I, I, I wanted to show you guys the, the muscles first to kind of give you guys some of the terminology that we're going to be using today. Uh, that way, you're not going to be super lost when I, when I don't draw them out as, or when I don't talk about them as much, but I will still draw them out, right? All right, so the, um, the first, or let me hear, let me do this first. I'm going to just color this one out. But the... Do, 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 do. Let me just color everything. Oh shoot, I have another arm to do. Mm, I'll I'll do that one later then. For now, let's just highlight this section here. Okay. We'll clean it all up uh, later. Nice. All right. Should I, should I test you guys or no? <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't. I don't know. I think it's too early to test you guys, right? No, 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 not yet. Not yet. Maybe, maybe by the end of the stream, I will test you guys and see your knowledge. Though I was uh, honestly, I was genuinely impressed the last time that we did this. Um, I think you guys actually got, got them right. Like you got, you got a good majority of them, right? And I'm, I'm, I want you guys to know I'm proud of you guys. Okay. Last time we did this, 
you guys you guys got him right you guys passed the exam <laughs> today i don't know it's too early in the it's too early in the morning for me at least okay so let's go ahead and i'll i'll, I'll talk to these about you guys i'm gonna I'm color these out and then i'll talk about what what the what they are okay so the first one right here that we're going to talk about not surprisingly is going to be the deltoid muscle also known as the shoulder muscle uh, we've talked about it a few times and again it inserts into these it inserts underneath the scapula under the chromium process and also partially into the clavicle the other section right here and i'm going to try to choose the same colors are going to be the tricep muscle now keep in mind that what's interesting about the tricep muscle is that the triceps will also connect um, they'll connect up to the arm. They're also connecting to the, I believe the scapula. I have to double check that. Um, I'm pretty sure because the triceps a little funky. Does it connect? I think it does all the way at the top there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It connects at the top of the scapula, uh, the shoulder blade there. Um, and then also there's another muscle of this, of the, of the tricep that's kind of underneath, um, that we don't really worry about, but that's kind of why there's three for, for tricep there. Um, but here I'm just going to color in a little bit lighter. This will be the tendinous area. All right. And this tendon is going to connect to that elbow there. And so part of the function again of the, of the arms is to be able to kind of move your arm, pull it forward, pull it back like this. And so when you're pulling the arm in here, I'll do it like this. You're seeing that the bicep is actually kind of curved out and you can kind of feel the bump there and the tricep muscle is going to stretch. When you go like this and open your arm out or kind of like what this guy's doing, you're going to see that the, that the triceps instead are going to be more, um, are going to be more defined and have more volume, uh, than the, uh, than the biceps will. The bicep here is actually pretty straight, right? So these contrasting in curves versus straight can actually be a very clear way, uh, to be able to draw some of the muscle groups. <laughs> I go Ollie's like, huh? There's a test here? What did I just follow? Yeah. Is your dog always sleeping? Always. Uh, thank you for the follow, uh, Dippy. Welcome in. Did you have anatomy test in art school? Um, I did, actually. And interestingly enough, the the first time I did it, I failed. Um <laughs> Yeah. So just know that if you guys don't understand it the first time, it's okay. It it takes a bit of time to practice and learn, right? Don't feel like you have to learn everything now. Um, again, take 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 what I say with a grain of salt, um, apply it to your own drawings, and then practice that out yourself and see what works for you, right? Um, and if you feel like, you know what, maybe I'm not at that level yet where I kind of really understand what's going on, uh, that's okay, right? Practice just the things that I think, um, again, that you feel like you're able to apply to your own art. And then later, you know, you can always go come back and explore, um, explore it again, learn new topics, play around with it, stylize it, whatever, whatever have you. Okay. Um, but I think with that, let me go ahead and also color the, I'm going to choose an arbitrary color here for the shoulder. Um, uh, let me think what's a color we haven't used yet purple we haven't used purple actually now that i look at it interesting all right there you go we got here the the muscle groups easy peasy right hopefully not too overwhelming there i think once you start seeing these muscle groups from different angles and stuff it'll really start coming together uh, thank you for the four months, Shadow Yomi. Uh, hopefully you're doing well. And uh, thank you for the follows, V, and everybody else coming in here. Also, Bison Hider, hey, welcome back in. Uh, what's this muscle? Oh, so this is a this is a mu a group of muscles actually um, on top of the scapula. Uh, this is the supra uh, sp supra spinatus, right? Supra spinatus or supra infraspinatus? Supra spinatus, sorry. Uh, on top. Then you have this large middle section there, and that's going to be the teres minor and the infraspinatus. And then the bottom one here is going to be the teres major. Um, so this is just a grouping of shoulder muscles. Um, and I'm just going to call it that for now. Uh, supra spinatus. Supra spinatus. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Brother Wolf. Um, but yeah, let's do a quick puppy power redemption. Somebody redeemed it. OK, 
Okay, cool, cool. All right, so let me go ahead. I think now that we've gotten all that covered, um, let me go ahead now and color everything else out. And I think we'll be good to go and moving on to the other diagrams. All right. Infra spinatus teres major teres minor. Thank you. There you go. And yeah. And then, and then there's also this little one up here, which is the uh, super spinatus. But that one, I wasn't, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to show that one to you guys. Um, mostly because it's, you don't even see it. Like it's literally covered by the, tra uh, by the trapezius muscle. So I was kind of like, eh, but you know, I wanted to give you guys a full, a full knowledge here today. So that way you're not going to be like, curse him. Wow, you, you, you forgot something, you know, again, I'm not trying to teach you guys all the anatomy. I'm mostly teaching you guys the ones that I, that I think are going to be most relevant and most applicable um, to your drawings and stuff. But, um, let me go ahead and draw out the rest of the arm here. So that way we have a full, uh, we got a full, uh, body, right. And then we'll continue. Also, uh, overlord JC. Hey, welcome back in. Let me give you a quick shout out. Ba -ba -ba. Shout out command overlord. There you go. Guys, check out overlord JC. He streams at the night for me. Um, but super cool artist. They got good vibes. They play good music. And, um, yeah, you know, just another dope art streamer that you guys can check out. Um, how do you join the discord channel? Yeah, there is a link to the discord. Just type in exclamation mark discord and, uh, you got covered. Also the one piece break, we'll do it during the dance break. All right. Um, let me see here. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. did I miss any other questions on here? Um, do I use paper like screen protector? Mm, I use a screen protector, but I don't use paper like because I find that paper like is actually overhyped, overpriced, and it also burns through my nibs faster than what I normally use for um, what I normally use for for my screen protector. So I have one that I recommend instead. Um, if you guys want that one, you can just look at the. Um, see what I have posted there on my on my description section on Twitch and that should be there though People have told me that it's sold out. So if it is sold out, I am sorry <laughs> I don't know what else to do about that. I can't like, you know, I have no say in in whether or not it gets restocked. So It is a paper feel. Yes, it is a paper feel um, It's a mat uh, also known as a matte screen protector. So it is it is a matte screen protector. Yes, um, but it's not, it's not the paper like brand. It's some other random third party brand, which is a third of the price. And I think better quality. So that's always a good deal. You know what I'm saying? When you can get something that's better quality and cheaper, like, yo, I think it's just that they do a really bad job with marketing, nor do I think that they care about trying to compete with, um, with paper like in that sense where they're trying to like beat paper. Like, I think they're just trying to, you know, get a little share in the market kind of thing. So they, they do what they can. I don't even know what they're called. That's how bad they're, that's how bad their marketing is. <laughs> I don't even know. I just know that they're good and I have a link to it on my, on my somewhere down below. Um, let's see here. Is this how you create your own reference sheets for future drawings? Um, no. No, this is the way that I'm drawing here is purely for study purposes. Um, the way that I draw, um, again, I showed you guys here. So someone earlier talked about like cartoon style and stuff. Um, but if I'm going to be drawing, uh, just like for myself and stuff, I'm not going to be doing all these diagrams because again, I, um, these are mostly for educational purposes. Once you start learning a little bit of the, the, the technique and stuff, um, you can start, you know, changing it up and applying it to your own gestures. So like here, I'll do this one really quick with you guys. Like, let's say for example, you have this pose and we're going to work on this one in a bit, but let's just say, um, where is this layer? Oh shoot. Was I drawing it on this layer the whole time? Oh no. Give me a sec. Yikes. Okay. Um, Okay. So like, for example, um, let's say I wanted to draw this one, like just for myself, right? Um, I would just go in here like this, you know, block in some of the shapes, block in some of the forms. I go in like this, find that rhythm of the arm, find the rhythm of that gesture, right? Uh, put the hands here like that. Find the rhythm there, uh, going this way. 
add a little change that a little bit right so I, I'd kind of keep it loose you can kind of see here how uh, you can kind of keep it nice and loose there and but again this is because I understand a lot of the anatomy already to be able to stylize some of these things out change up some of the proportions uh, and then be able to you know mix it around a little bit and kind of keep it more gestural a little bit more uh, maybe energetic than if we were to use something like this, the, the simple structures and shapes, right? So again, this is kind of just like how I would do it if I were to do it for myself or do it for work. Um, but if uh, for the sake of educational purposes here that we're doing on stream, I like to kind of take it a little bit slower with you guys and show you guys all the forms here in anatomy uh, to then be able to you know, take that and, and, you know, do with that as you will. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. And also thank you everyone for the follow manga. K, um, Alaf of verily alone. Cause I think that answers your question. Uh, the other question too, about whether or not this applies to the cartoon style. And the answer is yes. I want you guys to know that anatomy is not something that's specific to the realistic style. Okay. Um, anatomy is the language of the human body, right? And so if you, if you are, if you are going to be drawing characters, humans in particular, understanding the anatomy will actually only help you better when it comes to simplifying these things and, um, and then choosing to stylize it, either making it more realistic or more simplified, right? But again, it all starts with understanding the basic building blocks of the human body and then getting into anatomy and all the actual technical stuff. You don't have to know all the muscles, and I always tell you guys this all the time, you don't have to know all the muscles to be able to draw things successfully, but by knowing the muscles, it'll actually help you not only understand what's going on with the body, but it'll help you understand how to move the body around, how to pose them, you know, how do you change the body type, right? So instead of relying only on shapes and imagery, you can really rely on the actual understanding of the body to take your art to another level. Hopefully that, that makes um, some sense. Let me know in the chat if that doesn't make sense and I can try to, um, I can try to clarify a little bit more. Um, e, the answer is yes, adrenaline. If these are all just Google searches and Pinterest boards. Um, nothing too crazy. I think I've gotten this question <laughs> every, every stream. Um, I just find ones that I feel like have good lighting and also are conveying the, uh, the topic that I want to cover on the stream for today. So today I wanted to cover drawing the arms from different angles and different poses. And so I wanted to find some references. I kind of, uh, align with that, you know? Oh, no, no, you're good. <laughs> sorry. Sorry if I sounded annoyed. No, I was just saying like, I'm, I'm surprised that I get this question a lot because I didn't, I didn't think it was like, uh, I don't know, super interesting that I got these from Pinterest. You know, I was just like, yeah, Google Pinterest, uh, DeviantArt's also a really great place for grabbing references and stuff. Um, oh, we got another. Okay. So, here, um, Hey, Mr. K, let me read this one out here. Uh, the thought of AI being better at art is making me very, very sad. How should I cope with this reality? Reality. Interesting. I feel like art is dead and I'm being pathetic for getting mad at technological advancement. Ah, okay. So first of all, put an F in the chat, guys. If some of you feel this way or feel somewhat similarly to how uh, Koala Smash feels, um, I think this will be a good topic to talk about while I'm drawing the other arm here. I'm just kind of curious to see how many of you guys are kind of feeling a little similar about um, maybe the progression of AI and all that stuff. First of all, I think it's interesting that you say these things because um, like, for example, I'm just going to call this one out, like getting mad at technological advancement. You're basically getting gaslit. All right. This is this is um, all the tech bros basically telling you, hey, bro. Uh, adapt or die because when the typewriter was invented, people got replaced too. When the internet was invented, this is that too. So you're getting gaslit. Okay. Don't get mad. Uh, you know, don't be told that you're, that you're, you know, you being upset is a bad thing and that, that it's wrong of you to be upset. Right. Um, I think, I think that's 
one of the things I want to call out is I think it's fine to be upset. I think it's 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 rightly so. Just because it's technology doesn't mean that you should just let something happen um, the way that the way that it works, right? Um, the other thing that I want to call out here is for anybody here who has any fears of of um, AI and whether or not it's even still relevant to be an artist at this time. Um, I think the thing that I will say to you guys is I think one. Uh, this might this might sound disheartening, but one, the technology of AI, um, it, it has already been built and it has already existed. Actually, uh, it's it's only more recently that AI has becoming more, you know, more mainstream and stuff because of its early access and also public access right to all of some of the tools. But AI has actually been used for a bit of time. Um, to various degrees. So just know that it's already happening. It's already being used. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing because here's the thing that I will say, right? When when something is easy for, for anybody to do, it no longer becomes a skill, right? When anybody can do it, when anybody can pull up these things, it no longer becomes a skill. And so what ends up happening is if you really want to elevate yourself, as, a, as an artist, whether or not you care to use these tools or not, right, you will still need to develop a certain fundamental of skills to be able to develop interesting, cool looking things, compelling things, right? If, to be able to utilize any tool well, you still have to have the skills to use those tools, right? Anybody can pick up a pencil, right? But there are only certain people who can actually use that pencil to really push the medium to whatever it is that you want to make. Right. And that's how I think about AI in general. Now, there's another topic here about the ethics of AI. And again, I'm speaking from a from a theoretical sense about the potential of AI and what it could do in the art industry. And I think it can do a lot and actually solve a lot of issues with budgeting and time constraints and stuff like that. But from an ethical standpoint, I will openly say that right now I don't support AI art in its current state because of how how a lot of these data sets are being trained, how they're being produced, and how they're being overly monetized by a lot of tech companies without really the consent or the uh, consideration of the artists that are actually being put in to things, right? Now, what I will say about this, again, and, and this is, again, coming from somebody who used to be a software engineer, so I want to preface for those of you guys who are coming in here, I'm not just some random guy, okay, who was just like, yeah, AI, this is what I've read on, on Twitter. Like, I actually used to be a software engineer. I worked in the industry for five years, and when I was in college, when I was in university, I actually studied courses on AI, I studied courses on machine learning, and I also studied courses... Um, on computational photography, stuff like image diffusion, stuff like image morphing, triangulation. So I actually understand how a lot of the technology works, at least from a uh, rudimentary perspective, right? Um, so I'm not, I, I, you know, but at the same time, I also work in the in the animation industry now. And so I also understand how the pipeline works and stuff too. So so I guess the the, the long story short here, I want to say is at the end of the day, once I think once technology, uh, particularly, let's just talk about AI art and the various uh, subcategories of AI art and tools there. Once a lot of those things, I think, are a lot more ethically produced and ethically created and, and, and you know built, I think it'll actually help and benefit us artists the most because all the general people right now who are just like, yeah, look at me typing. I know how to make art. They only have a surface level understanding of what art is being produced. If you took the tools away from that person, could they still produce the art? Right? They can't. And that's the key thing there is if you as an artist, if you, if you can still produce the things without having to use those tools, and now you have the tools on top of that, you will be able to produce way more quality than anybody else will. Right. And what, what's that? What's that quote from uh, from Iron Man um, where Iron Man tells Peter Parker, he says, if you are nothing without the suit, you don't deserve the suit. Right. And it's kind of a similar thing here where I want you guys not to worry too much about whether or not you should still be an artist. I think the answer to this. Yes, you should still be an artist. Um, and I think there are technically things that you can do to to you know improve your skills as an artist but whether or not i think ai is technical uh, uh ethical and stuff yeah I, I i don't think it is and and i i don't support it right now in its current state right 
Now, you know, here, okay, so here I'll give you guys some example because you might be like, you might be like, hey, Sam, okay, well, you're telling me that AI art can be a useful tool. Can you give me some examples, right? So let's just, let's just go in a state of the world here where AI art has been ethically trained on public data sources. People who are being trained are either opting in because they want to be trained or because they are, uh, they are, you know, uh, getting royalties and stuff. Like, let's just say that artists are not getting exploited and someone actually builds a, a, a tool, a, a uh, AI tool that, you know, has, all the things that we as artists are not upset about, right? Let's just assume that at some point in time that exists. What are some things that artists can do now um, that could possibly make it more interesting that maybe other artists or other people, general users might not be able to do, right? Um, and to, to clarify what I mean by ethically used. So right now, one of the big problems with um, how AI data sets and stuff are being are, are being generated is that these billions of data sets that are being used and plugged in to create these black box algorithms are uh, a good number of those things are actually either public or uh, not sorry, uh, private data that shouldn't even be there in the first place, copyrighted data that shouldn't also be there, um, or just data uh, in general that is going to be exploiting the artist without their consent or without any royalties coming in because at the end of the day people forget that the art that we produce is our work right um, an example of this is it's it's kind of interesting because I've seen a lot of people have backlash towards how AI um, AI generating for voices right so I don't know if you guys have ever seen um, those videos of people for example um, using AI to generate songs of popular artists like Ariana Grande, uh, Kendrick Lamar, Drake, or whoever, right? But for some reason, the, the comment section is like, yo, that's wrong because that sucks. You can't just take someone's voice and put random words into them, right? And people can relate to that very quickly because they understand that the voice is tied to the person. And so thus it's unethical to do those things. But for some reason, when it comes to art and drawing, people don't make that connection. People think, oh, it's just a drawing. Anybody could have drawn that, right? And so it's a little different. So people have a different kind of take on it. But again, those are just some of the things I, I talk about uh, when I think about ethical. Like, what does it mean to when something looks ethically trained or whatever? It's, it's mostly when it comes at the consent of the artist um, or the data that's being used. Whereas right now, everything is being scraped. Everything from Instagram, everything from um, everything from DeviantArt, everything from the internet, and some things that are even being bypassed by firewalls to access, you know, data and stuff. So uh, again, that, that's just kind of where I'm at with all, with all of that stuff, right? Um, the people that will be using the tool will only need it for the purpose they needed, whereas the current state you have to con uh, contact an artist and whatnot. Or use the tool is to be minimized the job market for artists. Right. So again, so I'm going to go in here now and talk about because uh, earlier I was talking about the um, the the ethics and somebody somebody asked about that. But let's actually talk about where some of these tools can actually be utilized in a in a place. Um, in a place that could work in the industry like where where can our artists we as artists actually utilize these things um i recently saw a video by uh by Cor uh, corridor digital where they talked about their workflow for producing an animation that they made right um super cool right super cool stuff but here's what i'll say um about that right i think one of the limitations for using ai right now is that you know it's limited by a lot of the creativity of the people who are using it and stuff and I think let's just say that again, we have these tools to help us do simple walk cycles for animation, right? Then we as artists can then level up here and produce the works that we need to do to actually speed up the pipeline and work on more interesting animations like Sakuga scenes, more dynamic shots where the camera angles are zooming in and out. And those things are going to be a little bit more uh, less reliant on what exists in reality and more on creative interpretation and how we shoot angles for cameras, how we create the perspective for the characters that we're drawing in. Those are going to be more creative interpretations, right? And so I think, I think hopefully in some situation or some state of the world there, um, we will find ways to utilize AI to simplify some of the menial tasks of producing art such that we as artists can then focus on the more complex, difficult things that usually take up either a lot of budget or a lot of time to produce or a lot of skill. And so we'll be hopefully able to develop some of those skills more over time. But again, maybe I'm just having wishful thinking here for AI and maybe I'm trying to give it a pat on the back, but we'll see. 
um, it'll be marketing and sales. They'll love the fact that they, oh, look, yeah. So again, I want to clarify to, uh, to anybody out here who is maybe thinking I'm against AI. Again, I want to, I want to reiterate. I used to be a software engineer. I've been in the industry for five years in the tech industry, in SF, working for some of the biggest companies out there. I know what they do. I know what AI can do. All right. So I'm not saying I'm against a, uh, AI in general. And in theory, I think it has a lot of good potential. I think right now in its current state, I just don't think it's, it's in the right place right now. I think with a little bit more regulation, okay, with a little bit more uh, foresight in a lot of these things, I think it can be in a better place. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I know we had a long talk about AI here. I know it's a hot topic, guys. All right. So, um, but there you go. I would say that is, uh, that's about it. Um, now again, again, I think that there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of opportunity there, but I don't think that you guys should be worried. Okay. I don't think you guys should be worried about whether or not AI will, you know, will mean the end of artists. I think, I think that it just means, you know, at the end of the day, we might have to adapt, but it'll also, you know, come into the various tools that we use on a regular basis. Right. Um, let's see here. I think in industry, AI is a tool that is and will be utilized to speed up entertainment for the individual artists. I think it will lead to a flood of art and print on demand product that will likely take market share away from independent creatives. Yes, that is that is also another another good call out there, too, is I think I think the industry will find ways to cut corners by using uh, AI. And I think that's inevitable um, as long as I think it's it's not super exploitive. I think that'll be inevitable and I'm sure it's already, it's already happening, right? There's probably studios right now that are rubbing their hands at the thought of being able to, uh, you know, utilize a tool instead of hiring, you know, 10 to 20 or a whole team of people. And I think that'll happen. Um, but I think, yes, I think it will impact right now in its early stages. It'll definitely impact the commission market. It'll impact the general individual market. Um, but also, I think it can be um, altered for the better, right? I think this is kind of like the, the oh, what did I just do? I think this is one of those growing pain phases where I think we as artists will in some ways need to adapt and better understand some of the tools that, that already exist in the market if we want to keep up with that type of market, right? Um, again, some of the markets will change, right? Uh, ultimately a creative creates and it comes down deep because of the journey and thought of accomplishing something. If a computer algorithm can dissuade someone from making perhaps making isn't for them. Mm, perhaps, perhaps though. I, I understand where, again, I understand where a lot of people are coming from when they feel dissuaded because they, you know, like I'm sure a lot of you guys have been here before where maybe you've felt like maybe in the, remember, remember these days when back in the days, you would tell someone, oh, you're an artist? What kind of art do you do? And then you say, oh, I do digital art, right? And what do people say? They say, oh, you're not a real artist, right? Put an F in the chat, guys, if you've ever been, if you've ever been told that or if you've ever heard that in, at some point in your career, right? People, have, people in the past used to think, oh, you do digital art. That's not real art. You're just maybe clicking some buttons or doing this and that. And sometimes that feeling of being told those things can actually feel disheartening, right? When you hear those things, it's kind of like, yo, this, this kind of sucks. Like I, I'm doing art, uh, you know, like it's just digital, right? And I think that's where a lot of people nowadays, especially the more beginner artists kind of feel like where they're at right now. Just a different variation of it. It's like, what's the point of doing art when somebody comes to you and says, hey, you know what? I, I can do what you do, but better by just typing in some words. So what's the point of you drawing? You're not, I, I'm an artist too, right? And I think again, to that, I would say, don't worry about that all too much. I think really focus on your craft, focus on uh, the things that, you know, you are interested in. And eventually I think it'll be, it'll, it'll pay off for, for the better. Again, that doesn't mean that, you know, um, you should be negligent also of what's happening in the tech world and how that's coming into a part of what, uh, how, how that changes the art space. Um, but again, don't let it deter you from doing art altogether. Okay. But anyways, let's go ahead and close that topic. It's a good topic, but remember today's stream is focused on drawing the arms today. So let's get back into drawing some of that good stuff out here. All right. Thank you for the conversation though, guys. That's, um, 
it's a good convo, you know, and we I've, I've made a few videos on this on YouTube, by the way. So if you guys want to check out more of my thoughts on YouTube and stuff, um, you guys can check that out over there. Right. So there's a lot more, a lot more I have there in, in terms of that conversation. But yeah, it's, 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 it's good to hear that you guys are, you know, interested in these topics because I think they are at the end of the day, very interesting things to talk about and they do impact us as artists. Whether or not people tell you you shouldn't uh, think about that stuff, I think you should, you know. Um, but yeah, all right. Let's go into let's go into now talking about this other arm pose here. All right, guys. So we're gonna pivot back now into uh, drawing some arms here, and we'll get into this reference right here. All right. So we got this back pose. I'm gonna move it back down, and let's do. I'm gonna group these up real quick. Give me a sec. What is his line? Oh, oh, center line. One, two, three, four, five. Group. All right. Uh, I heard things such as "Ah, that is easy. You must you must copy an image under the drawing and do the drawing." Yeah, you know. Again, it's. I think, we'll we'll you'll hear stuff like that all the time. Um, you know, in in your time as an artist. Um, even my parents who, who come to me, you know, they ask me all the time. They're like, oh, you work in the, in the, like you, you have a job, you draw, like, what do you do? And I'm like, I, I, I draw the stuff for the animation. They're like, what does that mean? What does it mean you draw? Like, like even my own parents still don't understand what it is I do for a living, which I think is interesting. Cause I, I feel like, you know, it's, it's not an uncommon thing. I think sometimes the, the magic of animation is a... In some ways, it's 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 exactly that. It's kind of like magical, mysterious. Like how do things work? Um, and so, I think you'll always have that in your um, in your career as an artist. Did you try to show them? Well, not particularly the stuff that I do for work because it's NDA <laughs> NDA stuff that I can't show. Um, but. No, I've, I've tried to explain um, on some occasion. Oh, here it is. I was trying to look for this one. Thank you for the follows, uh, guys. I really do appreciate it. And again, I do appreciate the conversation. Um, I think it's an, I think the whole topic of AI is an interesting one. And if you guys are curious about my, my general kind of like, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up with this. Um, personally, I think AI is something I'm going to look into. Um, I'm going to look into it myself as well. I'm going to see if there are things that I can incorporate in my workflow that makes sense for me, um, in ways that I think will benefit me, um, but not ways that'll make me cut corners and things that I don't want to do. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I think there is such beauty in learning the fundamentals and developing your skills to be able to execute things well. I would like to hopefully use AI in a way that we as digital artists are able to use the undo and redo function in our programs, right? Like imagine the days you guys are going to go, you guys are gonna be like, Kaysom, you sound like an old timer, but back in the days guys, before, before programs like Photoshop and all of that stuff, if you wanted to undo something, you couldn't just tap on a screen or press or press control Z. What? You had to use an eraser. Sometimes you had to paint over a whole painting with white and redraw things and repaint things. You know what I'm saying? So I do think digital art has elevated the process and progress of art in many ways by just introducing something like the undo button, right? And so I would like to hopefully think that at some point in the future, we can get to a place as artists where AI will be utilized in that sense where it's not necessarily something that replaces the need for art, but instead elevates us to be able to produce better, higher quality work um, in the ways that we want to, right? Treat it like a tool because again, the tools don't make the artist, right? The artists at the end of the day make the art. So there you go. That's what I'll say about all of that stuff. Okay, let's go in here and uh, draw this one out. What is this? Oh, it's the gesture that we drew. All right, let's keep this one actually. I want to I want to keep this uh, little gesture here that we uh, that we have here. You've held on a non-digital picture and tried to pinch and zoom. Yeah, no, I've I've done that. I've done I've tried to undo <laughs> sketches before that I've tried that I've drawn. You know, I think we've all we've all like you know been there. Um, which by the way, um, let's go ahead here and 
let's talk about drawings all right so earlier um i did a kind of a quick little rough sketch with you guys and just kind of showed you what it looks like whenever i do a quick gestural drawing right so let's actually work off of this and instead of maybe what i was gonna do earlier which was kind of show you guys some of the structure and form right so again pivoting here and showing you that hey you don't have to draw uh cylinders and boxes sometimes it's good to just have some nice you know general shapes but again it's really up to you um, and up to your preference of what you want to do, right? Um, whatever helps you understand some of these shapes a little bit better, I think is really the key thing there. So let me go in and let's talk a bit about um, the arms here because we haven't really covered, I think, drawing the arms from different positions and how these different positions actually will change how the arm will look like. In particular here, I'm going to be talking about these terms called supination and pronation. Now, you might be like, hey, Sam, what, it, what is this? What are these terms that you're referring to? Now, supination and pronation are terms that refer to how the wrist actually rotates. Now, I'm going to show you guys a diagram because I don't want to have to draw the bones out today. And I don't know if I've already drawn the bones on a different stream. So I'll just show you guys a quick diagram um, and then that way we'll get a better idea of it. Okay, perfect. This is what this is what I have here. Um, some notes that I took last year. Okay, so you can imagine the forearm bone here. Uh, the forearm bones are basically comprised of two bones. Okay, you got the ulna, which is the bigger bone at the elbow, which actually creates the elbow here, and it connects to the pinky side of your arm. Then you have here the um you have here the radius bone which is on the lateral slash outer side of your arm there and that connects to the thumb side of your arm okay so you could imagine when your palm is opened out like this and you're imagine you're holding a bowl a bowl of soup okay both of your bones here are actually in parallel right now all right now what's interesting here is that when you rotate so if you guys do this yourself right you must stretch your arm out and rotate like this when you rotate right here What's happening here is that the radius bone is actually going to rotate as well and help that motion of that hand there. So the way that I think about it is radius. What is a radius referring to, right? A circle. When you think radius, you think circle. And what do circles do? They go around. So if you're having a hard time thinking about the bones and stuff, just know that the radius rotates like this, right? So the ulna bone barely moves, but the radius bone it does all of that so it's rotating there right and what's interesting there is basically when the when the bones rotate the muscles also rotate as well and so different positions of the of the arm will actually create different positions in the forearm and it'll create slightly different shapes so that's what we're going to be going over right now uh, with these examples that i have here uh, with this one as you can see here for the most part we've been drawing arms kind of flexing this way and stuff but she actually has her arm palm face forward here and i might do another example with the same pose but we'll draw the arm twisting this way instead okay uh but yeah there you go hopefully that was um hopefully that makes sense all right hopefully i'm not scaring you guys away thank you for the follows dax snake um adele creative and uh crew bus appreciate all the follows today guys all right so let's go ahead here and I will, hmm, should I focus on drawing the girl? Let me, let me go ahead and draw a quick, a quick kind of like body for this one. We'll do a quick little torso. And then what I'll do is I'll probably draw out, um, I'll draw out her body or sorry, I'll draw out her, her arm in like two different positions, both in supination and one in pronation. So I think that way you guys will kind of, uh, get an idea there. And uh, yeah, and we've, got, we've been getting a lot of follows just now. So thank you guys for joining in. If you guys did follow me today, I'd love to know uh, what got you guys to follow my stream today. Was it just something you saw and recommended? Um, was it because you found me on YouTube or was it because, I don't know, you're interested in some anatomy? I'd just love to know um, if, uh, if you guys are open to sharing it. We've been getting a lot of follows today and... I don't know. <laughs> Was it because of the AI talk? I don't know. Let me let me let me in. Let me in on some uh, some interesting info here. Um, but anyways, going back to um, going back to this one right now, I'm just going to kind of quickly draw in the torso. Again, we've already covered a lot of torso anatomy. 
um, on my stream. So if you guys want to see some of the particular torso anatomy, just check out my previous streams or check me out on YouTube uh, where we where we're actually uploading three videos a week over there. So I'm cranking. I'm cranking over there on uh, on YouTube, guys. And you know what? You guys have been you guys have been supporting all the videos over there, too. So really appreciate all of that. Okay, there you go. I think this is good. Uh, this is good for the torso. All right, and we're going to use this basic torso structure um, to actually just draw in a bunch of different arm variations. I think that'll be really fun. Uh, you're doing you're doing the anatomy struggle. Oh, sweet. Yeah, welcome in. Uh, again, I do more than just anatomy, but yes, we do cover anatomy uh, relatively. Uh, fairly fairly well <laughs> fairly often out here but we also cover just kind of to show you guys we do also cover other topics for example like how to draw different facial expressions so these are some drawings i've done uh, i think last month uh, in january so I, I show you guys how to draw the head how to draw different facial expressions how to uh we also cover topics on for example how to draw different ages and what looks you know how do you draw someone that's younger versus someone who's older uh, that kind of stuff Though I would say these are slightly more advanced topics that we're not going to get to till probably later, uh, later on in the boot camp and stuff. Yeah. Do you think that you have to start at an early age to to become really good? Like you can only become really fluent in a language if you start early, or that you can start after thirty? Oh yeah, no, you can you can start art at any time. Um, I think. I think art is one of those skills that don't really require too much physical uh, capability and physical uh, aptitude to be able to develop the skills necessary to be a good artist. Um, it's not something like, for example, a sport like basketball or football or or soccer or or the or football, um, where the younger you are, the better you are, because the older you get, the harder it is to move, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, I think it's, it's one of those things where I think it definitely, um, I definitely think it's something that's, that's possible to learn, um, at any age, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I'll be doing hands. Yes. So after we move on from arms, I'll be, I'll be focusing on hands. We'll probably give it a day or two. And after that, we'll move on to legs which I'm hoping we do next week. I'm hoping we can get to legs next week and then we'll see. We'll see how we, where we go from there. But all right, so when it comes to drawing the arms here, all right, so take a look at some of the positioning here of the arm. Notice how when the arm is opened out like this, look at that bicep muscle right here. So her bicep, very clearly defined. And we've talked about the bicep a couple times, but I'll explain it really quick that the bicep muscle basically connects to the humerus bone at the top there. Um, it also connects to, I believe, the coracoid process over here. Um, and then it also connects here to the radius uh, bone on this side of the arm. Now, underneath the bicep is going to be the, uh, the brachialis muscle right here. And that's going to insert into the ulna bone here and kind of wrap this way. All right. Now, again, don't worry too much about the anatomy. I'm, I, I want you guys, if anything, just to focus more on the shapes that we're seeing here. Notice how the bicep is going kind of outward uh, like this. Right. And the forearm is going this way because that'll actually impact how we're rotating the arm just a little bit. OK. You know, this woman, I might know this woman, too. I've, I think I've seen her on a, a social media a few times. Yeah. Um, and thank you for all the follows today, guys. So many follows. Sheesh. And I'll actually here, I'll do, since we have so many new people coming in here. Uh, welcome in, everybody. If it's your first time here, uh, my name is Kasem, and I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. And I teach everything from a nap. What the? What happened to the? To the, to the drawings here. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I teach everything from anatomy to uh, gesture perspective to all things related to character design. And I also currently work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. And um, currently right now I'm prepping to work as a character designer on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education or you're looking just to hang out um, on a stream with my dog or whatever, feel free to leave a follow out here. Um, if you're watching from YouTube, subscribe, like the video, all that stuff. 
And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, today's stream. But yeah, I try to do that intro. I try to do it not too often, but like maybe every hour ish or so, because I find that there are a lot of new people who come in at the hour mark, you know, and so some people who might have been here earlier might not be here or people who weren't here earlier are, are here now. Um, but yeah, uh, if there's any questions again, uh, feel free to let me know in the chat and I will try to do my best to answer, um, answer those questions for you guys. All right. So let's talk about, um, the arm in this position really quick. Okay. Um, what is the, what is my thought on the importance of talent? Ah, I have, <laughs> I have a YouTube video where I specifically talk about talent. Um, but the quick TLDR, if you don't want to watch that video, is that I think talent does exist. There are definitely people who are, uh, what's it called? There are definitely people who are, you know, born with an, an, an uh, innate ability to understand topics easier than others right away. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think that talent can only get you so far in getting you started with drawing. Um, but if you really want to make progress with art and stuff, you just need to put the time in. You need to put the skill, uh, you know, you, you put the time in to develop the skills necessary because at the end of the day, skill is what's what's most important in, in producing art, not talent, right? I know plenty of people, plenty of people back in high school, middle school who used to draw a bunch, they don't draw anymore, right? I'm the same. I used to be just like that too. I used to draw a whole bunch uh, back when I was younger. And then, you know, I stopped drawing for a bit. And if you stop drawing, you stop getting better, right? Talent can only take you so far. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of what I'll say, uh, what I'll say about that. But if you guys want a more like a uh, in-depth kind of topic about what I'm, what I'm talking about there, I would say just to check out my, uh, check out my YouTube video on that. Um, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Yeah. But if you, if you are talented, right, less talented and you put in the hours and stuff, oh yeah, you'll, you'll definitely be a great artist, right? I think you'll put a lot of good work in and you'll, you'll develop. And I think that's, what's most important. But at the end of the day, don't worry too much about talent and all of that stuff. Like, yeah. And, um, when did the 13 year old artist start to put the time in? Okay. So I'll explain that one. Okay. So let's, let's talk about that because again, this is a common thing I hear and this is a common thing I've even seen myself. Right. But hold on really quick. Um, guys, I do run ads on my stream every hour. Uh, one's gonna be running right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. Again, they help keep my streams monetarily viable, allow me to do what I'm doing on the platform. Um, and if you don't want to see any ad breaks, consider subscribing or using a prime sub if you have it. Um, but with that being said, I hope to see you guys after, um, the ad break there. But yeah, let's talk about the, the good old, um, 13 year old artists on Instagram where you're kind of like, huh, <laughs> wait a minute. Kaysen's, Kaysen's telling me that I, I don't need talent, but what about, uh, what about these youngsters out here? Right? Like how many of you guys in the chat, put an F in the chat if this has ever happened to you, right? You're scrolling on social media, Twitter or Instagram, and you find a random cool art piece. You're like, dude, this is insane. This is so good. You click on that piece, you click on the profile and it's like 13 years old, looking forward to freshman year high school. Yeah. You know? And you're kind of like, whoa. Uh, I, I was never this good at 13. What the heck's going on here? You know, like are, are kids just getting better? Are, they, are these just like the gifted, talented kids that everyone's talking about? You know, so here's what I'll say um, about that. First of all, um, I would not, I, I don't, I, I, th I think personally that you guys should not envy um, these, these artists. And the reason why is this, okay? Um, oh, Hold on. Well, we just wait. What the heck? We just got a, we just got a, we just got a, a raid from NVQ. Let me give you a quick shout out. Welcome in. I, I think you just followed me today too. I'm so confused. What do you do on Twitch? Let me see. Let me click you real quick. All right. Um, and I'll talk about the 13 year old artist thing, uh, really quick as well. Let me see here. Do you do art as well? Oh shoot. Yo, you do, you do art. Yes, you do. Okay. I'm gonna leave you a follow. Um, this is, this is an instant follow. I'll have to check out your streams. Um, 
welcome in welcome in thank you everyone who's coming in here from nvq stream uh hopefully you hopefully you had a good stream let me know if you have any uh if you want to share anything or just just i don't know curious to i'm curious to know what you were up to today yeah it looks it looks great the art the art is 10 out of 10 um and let me do a quick intro for those of you guys who are coming in here from uh, nvq's uh stream uh for those of you guys who are here for the first time the, the art looks nice i gotta i gotta look at it later here's a quick intro uh, uh what the heck my camera's off Ugh. okay okay hold on hold on we're gonna try that again okay three two one what is up crew it's your boy case i'm here and i am a filipino art streamer here on twitch and i teach everything from anatomy gesture perspective to all things character design and i also currently work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made castlevania right now i'm prepping to work as a character designer on shows like castlevania legend of korra and invincible so if you guys are interested in some free art education or you're looking just to hang out with my dog who is way 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 over there uh do leave a follow out here on twitch and i hope you guys enjoy today's stream and if you guys have any questions feel free to ask as well that's kind of part of why uh, we're here and stuff uh, but yeah i teach art on twitch um today um we're focusing so i also teach a boot camp out here on twitch um i call it the character design boot camp where i teach you guys all the fundamentals of character design and today we're focused on drawing the arm from different angles um as you guys can see previous streams we've talked about so um last stream i actually went over the intro to arms talked about that um other streams we've talked about drawing the torso from side view from back view from front view uh we've talked about different body fat distributions for uh the human body as well we've talked about drawing the head and the neck and all of that stuff the facial features of the face uh perspective how to draw characters in perspective we talk about that so we talk about a lot of fundamental things out here um it's mostly educational though so just a fair heads up here but thank you again for the raid um right now we were actually just talking about um this topic which was um whenever you find those uh, crazy good artists so here here's an example i want you guys to put an f in the chat okay put an f in the chat guys if you've ever been on instagram or twitter or whatever and you're scrolling on this and you're like yo this is a really really nice art piece and the moment you click on it and you look at the person's profile they're like i'm 13 years old 14 years old still in middle school yeah look at me and you're just kind of like damn this art is insane i was I, I, me at me at 13 i was drawing smiley faces you know this kid's on another level right so the reason why we, we're talking about this right now is because i i hear this i hear this topic all the time on my streams where people come in and they say KSM. um sometimes i feel discouraged because i see these younger artists who are so good and here i am here I am at like twice their age or three times their age and I'm struggling, right? What's going on here? What's the, what's, what's, what's happening here? So I think firstly, um, I, again, I wanted to let you guys know that, you know, don't let these things bring you down because at the end of the day, everyone's journey is different, right? Everyone's art journey is different and you, and you don't necessarily know, like maybe this person is really good at drawing a particular style, but when it comes to drawing other things, they might not be as good on, but well, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But at the end of the day, I think it's more important to focus on yourself and focus on developing your skills. And the other thing too, that I want to say about, about, um, about young artists is I want you to not envy a lot of these younger artists. If anything, I actually feel bad whenever I see a young artist on social media. And the reason why is because at a, such a young age, being exposed to a lot of um, influences of likes and shares and all these things that make you feel like you have to perform for other people can actually be a huge, huge detriment to your art growth. Because now, instead of you just having fun and exploring and drawing all, all these things, you start feeling pressured to have to get more likes or make sure your drawing is as good as the next one you post on social media and stuff like that. Right. So I always tell people, you know, don't, don't be, don't be too envious of these people because I've been there where I used to, this is going to sound kind of lame or maybe not lame, but, um, when I was younger and, and Instagram was still new, I would post my art all the time. And it quickly got to my head where I was starting to feel a sense of stress and a sense of fatigue because I was so worried that my piece that I drew wouldn't, wouldn't be as good as the next one. Right. And then all of a sudden that stress kind of took away the fun of drawing altogether. And then I no longer wanted to draw. I was like, you know what? This sucks. I don't want to draw anymore. I feel so stressed every time. 
And then I gave up. I didn't draw for a long time after that. And it, and it took me six years of not drawing at all going and becoming a software engineer, doing a different career to come back and re refigure out how to draw again, right? So just keep that in mind. But the other thing too, to keep to understand is I think one of the reasons why um, it's hard to make this comparison is because times are different, right? Nowadays, there are so many resources um, that are available to, to learn from, right? There's so many resources from uh, YouTube to books to online classes and all that stuff, which maybe we didn't have access to. Um, but the other thing too, is I want you guys to understand that, um, is again, talking about age and how age is not really a disadvantage. One of the most beneficial things about, I think being older, at least from my perspective and, and relearning these topics is that I have way, way more discipline now, um, than I did when I was younger. Right. I have more discipline now because I have spent years of my time doing a career that I didn't really enjoy, studying stuff in classes that I didn't even care about. And I learned how to do those things without having to be passionate or having to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so motivated to draw today. Because put an F in the chat, guys. If you've ever said that to yourself, right? You're like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to draw a bunch. You wake up tomorrow and you're like, oh, I'm not really motivated today. Maybe not. And then maybe you don't draw for a day. That day turns into a week. That week turns into a month. And all of a sudden you're not drawing. You're just like, ah, I'm not really motivated to draw. Right. And so I think now that I'm older, I've built a lot more discipline to be able to say, hey, this is something I actually genuinely want to do. Let's put the work in. Let's put the time in. Let's let's practice the these skills out. Right. Um, I appreciate drawing way more after not having the opportunity before. Exactly. Exactly. You, you, you appreciate it a lot more. Um, and in some ways it's actually a huge motivator and a, and a much more better strategy, um, for long-term stability with your art. Because I think that's the other important thing to note too, is that for anyone out here who feels like, oh man, it's too late or whatever. Art is a very long journey. If you really care about art guys, um, you're going to be doing it for, for a long time, right? It's not going to be something that you do for like a day and you're like, yeah, I'm so good. Like art is a long-term journey, a long-term investment. You're going to be practicing a lot of different topics, learning and developing a lot of new skills. And, and if you don't enjoy the journey, I feel like it's kind of hard to want to do art, right? I think the understanding and enjoying the journey is a huge, big part of that. Um, Oh, I missed a JSON redemption. Oh shoot, my bad. I know there was probably a raid and all the all the crazy uh, energy that came in. Am I a software engineer? Um, not anymore. So I used to be a software engineer, but now I work in the animation industry. Um, I work for a studio called Powerhouse Animation, and uh, they made Castlevania. And I'm not working on Castlevania right now, but I um I am working on a project. I, I'm not gonna say anything. But, but yes, I, I do work. Um, I don't work as an engineer anymore. Um, we got a quick redemption here. Quick redemption from Mr. Manfredi. Uh, Jason redemption. Here we go in three, two, one. Um, hey guys, it's me, Jason here. Um, wanted to let you guys know that Mr. Manfredi has a quote. A hero is not the one who never fails or falls. He is the one that who gets up again and again never losing sight of his dreams. Rock Lee. Really? Rock Lee said this? I don't remember that. Damn, Rock Lee is so poetic. I just remember him being a simp. Oh, I'm not allowed to say simp anymore. Being a, being a punk. All right, there you go. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. Well, is that, is that everything that I wanted to talk about there about about uh the the younger artists and all of that stuff? Hopefully um, to, to the person earlier who who was like, yeah, man, what about those young artists? Hopefully that gives you a little bit of reassurance, at least about like what the heck is going on there. Because I, I hear this all the time. People come in all the time. And you're like, man, Kasem, I'm discouraged about all these young people. I feel like it's too late. I'm discouraged about AI art. Is it too late for me to draw? You know, <laughs> like all of these different things. And I always tell people like, don't worry about those things. Just focus on you. If art is something that you genuinely care about, you know, don't let those other things distract you. Do it because it makes you happy. Not because you're trying to, you know, just because you're trying to get likes or something on, on Instagram or social media, right? Um, 
Kasem, can you did you draw the 3D shapes on a different layer? I hope so. Yes, I drew the gestures in a different layer. Yeah. There you go. Am I in Austin? No, I'm not in Austin. I'm in LA. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, there's, they were like, do you want to move to Austin? And I was like, no, I, I don't want to move to Austin. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manfredi. Um, but okay, guys, so now that we've drawn here the arms, um, I drew the arm here kind of at this angle. And this again, I'm not drawing the hands right now. Um, but one of the things I want to call out here is that the hand right now is in, in a position called supination. All right, so how do you know something is in supination? Well, let's 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 talk about that really quick. So supination, supination, and actually, yeah, let's 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 talk about it. So what is what is supination? Basically, supination is when the um, ways to think about it is when the ulna, ulna and radius are parallel. All right, par parallel. Parallel. I can't spell parallel. That seems that seems fairly correct. Um, and it's also when the palm is facing upwards. So palm upwards. All right. Uh, palm upwards. And what happens here when the when the supination when when the arm is in supination like this? Well, one of the first things is here you're going to be seeing the the stretch there. Check this one out. The stretch there of the, uh, what's it called? Of the flexor muscle, as well as a little bit of a stretch there. Um, not as much of a twist there of the, of the uh, ridge muscle. Also, the bicep, interestingly enough, is also going to be a little stretch too. So you're going to be seeing more of a stretch. And then when I rotate the arm, you'll actually see how it's going to look slightly different. All right. So that, there you go. That's uh, supination. Uh, right there. Let me actually do. Hmm, what's the best way to do this? I think if I do it, all right. Here, I'll, I'll color it out a little bit, and then I'll answer some questions in the chat really quick. So let me go ahead and merge this. So this is going to be the arm in pronation. Very good, very good. And then let's do. I'm gonna duplicate this, merge this, and erase all of this. Huh? Wait, what? <laughs> uh, I guess we'll keep the shoulder there. Give me a sec, guys. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna try to isolate the torso here, so that way I can draw another arm on top. All right, and we'll draw the we'll draw the other arm now in a different position. So that's kind of what I'm trying to go for here. All right, so give me give me a quick second for that one. Um, Kasem, are you able to draw without the guidelines? E yes. I can generally draw without guidelines. Um, but I think there's nothing wrong also with using guidelines. I think guidelines are, are great and help you get a bit of structure. So usually, for example, whenever I'm doing something for work, right, um, for animation or all that stuff, I usually do like a nice rough sketch first and then I work on the details. Um, I, I always think it's important to work out the rough details before jumping into uh, before jumping into all the crazy details because and because um, I think it's just a clearer way and a faster way to make sure you're in the right direction. But also there's so many different ways to approach, you know, doing a simplified look like you can do it in, for example, um, by thumbnailing. You can do it by doing rough forms. There's so many different variations, right? Uh, do the arms pointing to up to the back now? Well, we've actually done that in the last stream. So I would say take a look at the last stream here where I drew these from imagination. So I did these in like one, like kind of like one to two minute gestures where I show you guys how to use loose forms and gestures uh, to draw these different poses and stuff. So I would say check out my last stream where you can kind of see where I did that. And and we might actually do that today too. Uh, now that I think about it, we might have some time today. Um, but let's let's um let's save that for later for now all right so let's go ahead now and let's draw another uh, another torso on here or another sorry another arm position here because i think that'll be helpful to see uh thank you for the prime sub uh, by the way appreciate that and let's see here let's see if i missed anything 
Um, would you mind putting them uh, on while you finish out the sketch so we can see how it looks under the new sketch? Not sure if my English makes sense. Oh, you want to see like the sketch underneath kind of thing? Did I accidentally erase it? I did, didn't I? Damn. Okay, I'll, I have some of the layers for them though. Um, also, if I missed any questions, guys, just please feel free to retype them in the chat. Um, I will try my best to answer them. Sometimes I miss a bunch of questions, so I, I apologize if I if I missed your question. Again, there's just so many different questions, so I'm trying to like read them off and stuff. Um, can you talk about leaving software engineering to do animation? We can probably talk about that. Um, can you talk about leaving? Uh, so we got we got that question. Any tips on drawing backgrounds and buildings? Unfortunately, not yet, because I mostly focus on character design and character animation and stuff. Mm. Cool, cool, cool. Um, supination means your hands can hold soup. Exactly. Yes. I started after 30 and I will crush most of these artists for real. This let's do it. There you go. Shadow shapes out here. Sounding like a, <laughs> sound like a true, a true zoomer in the chat. Uh, thank you again for the, for the sub, uh, Choro, uh, Choro Zorro. What are my favorite books to study anatomy? Oh man. Bridgman. Bridgman is great. Uh, I think Proko is, he's not, a, he's not a book, but he doesn't have a book, but I think he's great to study. Uh, Tom Fox is really good. Mm. Let's see. There's those Morpho books, which I've actually looked through a couple of times. Those are pretty good as well. All right. Oh, and thank you. Yeah. We just hit 30 K. All right. So, um, let's do... Oh yeah, An Anatomy for Sculptors. That's true. That's actually a good book as well. Um, do you have any tips for drawing dynamic poses? Yes. So we'll be going over dynamic poses um, eventually. We we did, we covered it last year, and I'll show you guys some stuff that we did last year on dynamic pose. Like we go pretty in depth. Um, we do stuff like this, where I show you guys not only how to take a reference image like this, like let's say you have this pose like that, but I also show you guys how to draw these things from different perspectives using your imagination. So how do you, for example, take this same reference and the same drawing, rotate that in perspective. We'll talk about how to, how to rotate a little bit more. So kind of change the horizon line. And then from imagination, do something like this, where it's completely a different perspective. Um, and then we can talk about things like focal length and, and all of that stuff as well to really change the warping and give you some of those crazy uh crazy foreshortened poses and, and all of that stuff so um we'll talk about stuff like this like how to rotate poses in perspective um but yeah not yet though um not yet because again to to get to that we have to like learn the basics you get what i'm saying like that's like really i think that's really advanced stuff but i get it it's like it's like the fun stuff you know i i like covering those things too but I do, I do think it's a little bit more on the advanced side. And so, you know, baby steps. So anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to rotate this arm and you're actually going to see a few subtle changes here. Um, a lot of this stuff is going to stay the same, but something that's also going to change here is going to be the bicep, I believe is not going to be as defined because let me think, let me think. So when you stretch out the arm like this, you're pulling the you're stretching out the bicep more. So I think this is actually going to open out more this way for the bicep there. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to draw the, the, the wrist actually rotating a little bit. So kind of like a rotation of the form there. Right. Um, but let's see here. Do you do gesture drawings much? Sometimes. Yeah. Um, not as often as I'd like. I wish I, I wish I did more gestures to be honest. I like doing gestures. Uh, when you draw, do you have a full drawing ready in your mind or do you build it as you go? I think more often than not, um, more often than not, I, um, I draw it as I go. And so I try to come up with, you know, the, the visual and all that stuff. But okay. So one of the interesting things here is when the arm is technically, uh, facing and twisting this way. So you can imagine here, let's say the arm is kind of going here. Uh, what's going to happen now is let's just say we have like, it's kind of hard to visualize it without maybe drawing out the hand, but um, what's going to happen here is that when you have the arm kind of twisting like this, 
you're going to be seeing more now um, of the, so you can imagine she's kind of going like this, twisting her arms uh, downward there. We're actually going to be seeing some of the, uh, the, the backside of the hand there, right? That's going to be those extensor muscles kind of twisting forward, kind of combining there. Um, and then we're also going to be seeing now the bulge here of um, that extensor muscle over, sorry, not the, the flexor muscle right here underneath. So it's going to be very subtle. Um, I always say like it's a very subtle kind of change, um, but knowing kind of the, knowing what the heck is going on here with the muscle groups can actually really help you out when it comes to twisting the form a little bit. Um, and it's like very, like very subtle, uh, very subtle changes again in the, in how the, the forearm works and stuff, right? So this is going to be all kind of grouped together. Um, you'll see some of that going in here like that. And then you'll have the arm kind of facing down now. So now here, the arm, uh, the hand is kind of like facing downwards, right? Uh, maybe, maybe it should be facing forward uh, there, but kind of subtle rotations there will kind of help us with understanding what the heck is going on. The connections of the muscles are still going to be the same. It's just that things are going to be kind of being pulled in a little bit more. Um, so let me kind of liquefy that a little bit there. <laughs> yeah, my, my dog is chilling. Um, let's see. All right. Um, in the meantime, so I'm going to go clean this one up a little bit. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to answer the question really quick. Um, really quick about the question of, um, what was the question again? Oh, the question about how I kind of pivoted to work in the animation industry from software engineering. So I'll, I'll kind of briefly talk about it. So that way we're not like spending too much time. Um, but the, the TLDR there is after about working in the industry uh, as a software engineer for about like five years and stuff, I was honestly getting a little uh, fatigued and kind of burnt out from being an engineer because I personally didn't even like drawing. Um, I was mostly interested or sorry, I personally didn't like engineering, um, growing up, I wanted to be an artist and stuff, but you know, society and my, my Asian parents and all that stuff basically told me like, Hey, you should not do that because you're going to be starving and this and that, and, and all the other things that you hear about, you know, about, about artists and stuff. Right. And so, um, because of that, I decided to not pursue art anymore and I became an engineer and did all those things. But after a bit of time, I was kind of like, man, my life kind of sucks. And I don't know if I want to be doing this anymore because I actually really like drawing and I want to, I want to just have fun and do that again. So I started drawing, um, about a, an hour or two, like about an hour or two hours every day, um, either before work or after work, just kind of, you know, getting into that ha habit of drawing again. And I was mostly doing it for fun, not because I thought that I would do a career change. I didn't think initially that I'd be able to even do a career change. Cause let's be honest, it's kind of crazy to, to be like, man, I, you know, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, it feels kind of crazy when you feel like you, um, when you want to get into art again after, you know, after a long time and you're older than all these other people, and then you go on social media and you see all these younger artists who are way better and you're kind of like, dude, what am I doing? Right? <laughs> like, like, what am I doing when there's all these younger people here who are killing it right now? Right. Feeling like you're playing a game of catch up. And so, um, I think initially what kind of helped me be more successful with it was really being able to just, uh, being able to just do it for myself and do it for fun. Not because I was trying to pressure myself to pivot careers. Now, as I kept doing that, I was eventually, you know, as I, I was developing my skills and stuff, I was eventually able to do stuff like pick up jobs. Um, I was picking up some jobs, doing some small commission work, stuff like that. And then over time, I was starting to realize, that, oh, wait a minute. You know, I kind of like, I kind of like doing this and I can see myself making some money from this. Maybe I'll try to do it full time. And that's actually when I started pursuing doing uh, art full time is when I quit my job uh, back in 2021, I believe it's been some time now, uh, back in 2021 was when I quit my job to pursue doing art full time. Um, and, uh, from there I, 
um, started trying to figure out what I was doing, trying to, you know, pick up more commission work and stuff like that. And then in 2022 was when I decided I wanted to work more in the animation industry. And so I started to develop more of those skills, more of the fundamental skills uh, required and stuff to work in the industry and stuff. And then uh, towards the end of last year was basically when I was doing, uh, sorry, uh, 2022 was mostly when I was doing a bunch of freelance work and kind of when I was actually picking up uh, like multi-month contracts for doing character design and stuff. And then towards the end of last year was when I f uh, finally was kind of able to pick up a longer term contract for a studio, uh, in particular powerhouse animation. So it's, it's kind of been a bit of time, but I think it all really started with me wanting to, uh, wanting to have fun again and kind of remember why I even started drawing in the first place, because I think that was for me, one of the things that I lost, um, as I, you know, as I was getting older and feeling the pressure of society and feeling the pressure of paying bills and stuff, I was starting to think of uh, art as something that I only should be doing if it was going to make me money and not something that I would just do for fun because it was something I enjoyed, right? Like back when I was younger, I used to draw all the time because I would just be like, oh, this is so fun. There's a kid, there's a show that I'm watching. I want to do some fan art or uh, I want to make my own characters, right? And I kind of lost sight of that. And so... I think that that was like a really big, um, important thing for me to, to re remember and re relearn, I should say. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answers your question. I think it's, um, I think it's a common thing more than not actually to, to want to, to, to have pursued something else, but let's, let's actually see in the chat. So if you guys put an F in the chat, if right now you, um, you are, you know, currently either working a different job or you're maybe studying something else in school, but you would love the idea of, of doing art, right? You're like, man, I wish, I wish I could do art, but you know, I'm doing something else right now. Let's just see. I want to see how many of you guys are in that position. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> let me write some notes here, uh, some notes here, uh, radius, uh, rotates over Ulna. Palm down. Um, and then you'll see the, again, it's so subtle. Like the, the, the shift is so subtle, uh, when you see it that you're gonna, you're gonna be like, Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. I'll show you guys really quick. Um, Like it's such a subtle shift, like the, the muscle, the, the bumps and the muscle and the forearm are just going to shift, uh, the direction based off of where we're seeing more, uh, tension in the form, right? So in, in supination here, the, the muscles are more relaxed. And so you have the bunching of the, uh, the ridge muscles kind of just stretching forward. The forearm muscle of the flexors are just kind of stretching forward. And then you have the, the bicep, which is nice and chill, uh, nice and straight actually. So this should actually be a little bit more, oops, um, a little bit straighter here. Right. Uh, but then when you have the arm in, in uh, pronation here, you're going to see a little bit more twisting there. And again, it's super subtle. So subtle. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. No, this should be stretched out more. Right? How does it work again? Let me think. Let me think. When you twist it, the biceps will get pulled. Okay. Let me, let me, let me feel it on my own arm here. <laughs> you gotta, sometimes you gotta just do it yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's see here. When you twist the bicep stretches like so. When you twist the bicep stretches and that is why when you flex your bicep and you go like this and you twist your bicep stretches, aha, there you go. There you go. See, look at that. See, so notice how when the arm here, um, geez, when the arm is like this and it's not in, um, it's not in pronation. This is, this is this supination, right? So I'm going like this, bend the arm forward like this. When the arm is in, is in, uh, when the arm is in supination like this, the bicep, notice how it's not stretched, but when you twist it, look what happens. You see that? Hold on, hold on. You see that? 
Huh? Study the study your own body. Yeah, and so the reason why <laughs> the reason why it does that, as Toasty was saying, is because the bicep actually connects to the radius bone. And so what happens is when you're twisting your arm, when you're twisting your forearm like this, you're actually twisting. Um, you're also rotating your radius over the ulna there, which then also lengthens that bicep out. Uh, see? Anatomy, guys. Anatomy's crazy. Um, but that's why, yeah, that's why I love anatomy. <laughs> so there you go. Subtle, uh, subtle, like subtle little things like that can, can actually go kind of a long way for, uh, for drawing. I love anatomy. It's, it's stuff like that where like you can go in the mirror and, and just like look at yourself and be like, Hmm, I wonder what's, what's going on here. You know? I don't know. I like that. Maybe, maybe it's not, it's not, no, I'm not showing my guns. I, uh, that was, I have no guns to show. First of all, um, it was purely for educational, uh, purposes here. Okay. Uh, but there you go. That is going to be supination and pronation. I think we have time. Oh no, we got plenty of time. We have a whole hour left. Oh, sweet. Okay, good. Cause now, <laughs> Now we're going to talk about, um, we're going to do some more, more examples, but we're going to do one more example here. All right. And let me do it kind of like at a new layer here, lighter opacity here. We got plenty of time. Are you guys okay? You guys doing all right, by the way? Um, let me know in the chat if I'm, if I'm going too fast or anything like that. Um, let me know. Would it be better to start on digital or start on paper? I think start with whatever you have, honestly speaking. Um, as an illustrator, one of the worst things uh, in an art career is suffering burnout. I, I agree. I agree. And that's why I, I tell you guys, like, if you really want to have longevity in your career as an artist, um, try to remember why you got into drawing in the first place. Um, and I think that'll actually help you out way, way more than... Um, you know, just trying to be like, oh, speed running art and trying to get as fast as you can to be to be like your favorite artist on Instagram or whatever have you. Right. I think just focusing on yourself and focusing on what makes what makes art enjoyable for you is is really um, the, the key, the key to success, I think, because it's, it's all a long game. Right. It's all one big, long, uh, long game there. Do I want to draw the, the, the hand? Eh, it's fine. Okay. I just, I just wanted to draw a little, uh, a little hand there to kind of show you guys illustrate here what the heck is going on. Sorry, not the not the best hand. Okay, <laughs> don't worry too much about the details of the hand. Um, but let me draw the hand in the other way here for uh, for this little pose, and let me use the same colors. Okay, nice. Uh, thank you for all the follows today. Uh, Elephant, Ella Phoenix, Pop, Pop, Fop, Herbert Stone, Velna, um, Harry Jiggly, Avalon, um, Alexand, Alexander, Adriel, Bisser, uh, Hisnal, KG No Name. So many follows today. Dunes, uh, Corn Creed, the tall Finnish dude. I don't know what's going on today, guys, but I'm I'm glad you guys are here, and I I hope you guys are genuinely enjoying today's stream. Um. I'm trying to do my best and yeah. It's all that I can do, I guess. Try to do my best. Hopefully it's hopefully it's helpful. Okay, there you go. 
thumb's a little far out, but that's okay. Let me bring it back in a little bit more. Okay, there you go. Uh, <laughs> your dog is broken. No, he's just he's just having fun, guys. Don't you're making him feel insecure. <laughs> Don't le leave him alone. He's just trying to sleep. And you guys are bullying him. All right, there you go. So um, again, just kind of showing you guys um, the the positions there and all that stuff. So uh, supination, pronation, all of that good jazz. This is going to get merged into here. Um, boop, 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 boop. Oh, look at that. We're animating. See, look how easy animating is. Look at me. There you go. All right, so that's a little um, that's a little diagram there of um, of the arm. All right, so hopefully that was um, helpful. And let's get into I would say um, I would say let's let's jump into one final pose. All right. Um, and hey, welcome in, yeah, welcome in everyone who's coming in here today. Glad to have you guys joining in. Um, got a lot of cool artists here today. A lot of people who are uh, here for the first time, maybe here before. Um, and then let me do. I don't think we need this arm here, unfortunately, or fortunately, we don't need this one. We just need, we just needed one, one, uh, one arm today. And let me liquefy that one out just a tad bit too. There. Okay. So let's move this one. I'm going to say goodbye to, I forgot her name. Unfortunately, I keep forgetting her name of this person. Uh, what is it? Uh, something beefcakes, something beef patty mommy. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know her name. Uh, lean beef patty. W what did I say? What? I don't even know. Just forget whatever I said. <laughs> Anything I said, ignore it. That's clearly, clearly not beef patty mommy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's the one that's, yeah. All right, so again, we'll have all these layers, and don't worry, guys. I'll be uploading these on. Um, uh, these will be uploaded onto the to to the subscriber resources and stuff. So if you guys are subscribed on Twitch, you guys will get access to all of this good stuff out here. Um, but let's go do one more, and I think this one's gonna be a fun one because this one here is gonna be. Um, kind of uh, just drawing I just wanted to draw an example with you guys where she where the character is just kind of like a not muscular character right not super buff and stuff um, but we're gonna talk about how for example the arm bends and, and what the heck is going on there right so let's go ahead and draw this one uh, next all right okay there you go put that there shadows and stuff all right let's go ahead and do this one now this will be uh this will be a fun one right here another arm pose um do you guys just really quick do you guys want me to go over um all the shapes and stuff or should i just kind of do a quick gesture and then get into the arms like what are you guys feeling right now quick gesture time maybe just kind of speed it up a little bit let me know in the chat what you guys are feeling And I need to, I want to shrink this one a little bit more. There's some like foreshortening going on there. So we want to make sure we're capturing that foreshortening. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay. Um, Lean beef mommy. No, 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 not lean beef mommy. Hey, there's <laughs> no lean beef mommies out here. Uh... You have great shoulder posture when drawing. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of something I had to adapt because you could imagine um, drawing for drawing for twelve hours every day um, to really avoid injury. You got to have good posture. <laughs> it's like it's just an, like a necessity. Um, otherwise, I'm, I would just be injured. I'd have neck pains all the time, and um, you know all of that stuff. So, I would say invest invest in good posture invest in good ergonomics and 100 percent you will you will you will uh your body will thank you in in the long run 
Um, I will say it now. I've, I've, I know people who I, I have coworkers who have to take like weeks off because they have wrist pain or they have some sort of like neck pain or something like it's, it can get really severe especially as it builds up over time and stuff like man it's um it's really important um pinterest yeah pinterest is what i use um pinterest deviantart and google are my go-to for gathering references if i'm not doing it myself the other best place you can gather references guys is um the mirror i know it was it was silly earlier when i was showing you me flexing but like dude that's it's, it's actually helpful. <laughs> it's, I don't know, like study, study your body, you know? Um, but all right, let's go do some, yeah, let's go do some quick gestures on here. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on, um, the forms and stuff, right? Because we should be good. Look how long her arm looks like. It's crazy. Oh, but we're not going to draw her hands today. We're, we're going to save hands for another day, by the way. So if you guys are like, Casey, why aren't you drawing hands? It's because we're saving it for another day. So don't worry. Um, but thank you, everybody, for the follows. Um, I'd love to know for those of you guys who, um, who are following today, um, how did you guys come across my stream? Was it from, like, recommended? Was it from a raid on, on Twitch? Was it from uh, finding me on the front page? Was it from YouTube, perhaps? Did you just... I don't know. Just see my stream on YouTube. Let me know in the chat. I, I'm genuinely curious to see how, uh, what's bringing in, what's bringing in my viewers today, my new peeps. Um, Pomodoro now. Nice. I found you and recommended. Recommended. Okay. Wow. Um, a friend of yours DM'd my stream. Really? Dude, shout out to your friend. That's, that's actually crazy. A friend of yours DM'd my stream, huh? A lot of recommend, a lot of recommended people today. Wow. That's crazy, dude. Recommendations. Thank you to Twitch for, um, putting me, uh, putting me on recommended. Appreciate that guys. Appreciate you guys clicking on my stream today. Yeah, um, again, for those of you guys who are new here, uh, welcome in. I, I teach art on Twitch. That's kind of what I do. Um, but also, we, we also do other things too. We also have conversations and stuff like that, which I actually really enjoy. Um, we had a pretty in-depth conversation earlier about AI art and um, my general thoughts on whether or not AI art means the end for artists and what, what it might even look like for changes in the industry and for the everyday um, kind of like local artists and stuff. So... I, this will probably be on YouTube, but I was going to say like, if you want to see more of that, just probably check out, um, check out the stream. If you want to hear my general thoughts, I probably won't talk about AI anymore today. Um, <laughs> because, uh, because I feel like we've, we've done a lot. We've done a lot of talking about AI and I don't want to make this whole stream like a, a, a Reddit sub thread on, on AI topics. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's good to talk about these things uh, in general because, um, AI is, relevant but um yeah sorry i'm just i'm just trying to talk out while we while we draw here um you mentioned wrist pain reminds me uh Zeronis, who did original contract for ari and gwen broke his whole arm for drawing too much yeah and it's it's so sad to hear um when you hear so stories like that of really good artists who um, who are, you know, dealing with fatigue. And sometimes it's it, like, you don't think about it because it hits you. It hits you all at once, right? It's like a slow, it's a slow process that you don't notice at first, but then eventually over time, all of that, um, bad posture, all that shrimping that we're doing, come on guys, put an F in the chat right now. If you're watching my stream right now and you got bad posture, if you're out here, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we need to do a quick posture check real quick. Put an F in the chat. Like right now, you might not notice it, but one day, dude, oh man, you're going to feel it and it's going to suck. Um, when I was first doing um, studio work and stuff and I was drawing, like when I was getting used to drawing for 12 hours a day, I was getting wrist pain because I, I wasn't, I don't think I was doing it properly and I wasn't giving myself the proper breaks and stretching. Um, now I'm a lot better at doing that and I don't have that problem anymore, thankfully. But, um, yeah, it was, it was kind of scary being like, dude, I got to draw all this time. And like, 
how am I going to sustain this when I'm, you know, ending my day with having wrist pain and neck pain, right? Standing. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's what I like to hear. Standing. You're like, case I'm, I'm actually uh, watching you while I'm, uh, while I'm doing some stretches. I'm actually walking right now uh, while <laughs> watching your stream. Sheesh. All right. Anyways, guys, um, sorry, we were getting distracted today. Let's get into, um, the rough anatomy here of the arm. Again, we're focusing primarily on arms today and drawing arms from like different poses. We've done a lot of arms. As you can see, we're kind of building out a whole sheet here of uh, various arm poses, primarily just to show you guys um, what I'm looking for here when it comes to drawing arms and what I'm thinking about, because it's, it's not as simple as drawing out the, just drawing out cylinders and, and spheres. I think at first it can be, it can be as simple as that when you're first starting out. But if you really want to take your drawings to that next level and kind of push it further, um, one of the best things you can start really doing is understanding the overall um, understanding the overall structure and understanding the anatomy such that you get more of a likeness to, um, to the drawings that you're making, you know? Um, so give me a sec. I'm just working on this torso. I'm kind of speed running the gesture and stuff, but, uh, this is kind of how I normally draw when I'm not drawing like all the, you know, <laughs> cylinders and boxes and stuff that you guys see me do on my streams. That stuff, again, it's, it's purely for, um, I do a lot of that purely for educational purposes, but also it just helps. It just helps to understand sometimes, um, especially when you're dealing with a very complex uh, pose or structure or whatever have you. So. And, um, oh, earlier somebody did have a question about um, somebody had a question earlier about, uh, what was it about whether or not we're going to cover legs. We will cover legs eventually. So my, my, so for those of you who are interested in the boot camp uh, schedule, um, we're going to be covering arms and hands for the rest of this week. Next week, hopefully we will cover legs. Um, we'll do feet. And then after that, we'll probably draw different body types. And then after that, we will draw characters in perspective. And I think that'll be a good rounded boot camp topic. So we'll do anatomy first. We'll do body types next. And then we'll do perspective. And then I think if we have time in the 30 days, we'll also do dynamic poses. Would you guys want that? Hopefully I can squeeze it in. Um, yeah, hopefully I can squeeze it in and then we can do some of that. Um, had an animation director working with me who quit back in late 2021 due to the fatigue and burnout. The industry can be brutal if you don't have a proper balance. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, do you do some kind of warm up before a long session? This, <laughs> this is actually, uh, this is actually my warm up before I go to work is I stream with you guys. And you know, after, after drawing for like three hours with you guys and just doing these kind of more laid back gestural, not gestural, um, kind of studies and stuff. When I go into work and I do the actual, you know, drawings I have to do, it's like nice and easy, baby, nice and chill because I'm already warmed up and I'm good to go. All right. But anyways, I think we're good here now with the body. So let's get into talking about the arms. So um, what I'll do here is I'll start off by drawing out some of the simple structure first. Um, and then from that simple structure, because we, we basically drew out the gesture, right? So here's the um, nothing much to it, but here's the gesture of the arms, right? Again, I'm ignoring hands today. I'm sorry. I know you guys are like, bro. Hands is what I struggle with the most. Baby steps, okay? Baby steps. All right. So let's talk about some of the simplified shapes. And then from those simplified shapes, how do we kind of break these simplified shapes down into um, a little bit more complexity with the anatomy? And then how do we maybe kind of clean it up a little bit to make it look kind of more, um, less of a less of a muscle diagram and more of an actual kind of illustration that seems viable, right? Um, and thank you for all the follows today, guys. Really do appreciate it. Um, 
guys are guys have been really following a lot today. I don't even know how many followers we're at right now, but I know we've gotten a lot today. I just I can tell. Um I don't know what's going on, but thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's get into um, some of the basic forms and we're actually hmm should I talk about the skeletal anatomy of the arm let's do okay let's do it like this I'm gonna do a skeletal anatomy diagram because I don't I just realized we, we haven't done that yet and then we'll talk about um, we'll talk about laying the muscles on top I realize we haven't really done a skeletal diagram okay so here's what's kind of interesting so again the deltoid muscle is gonna be covering here um, the clavicle right but underneath all that clavicle and all that stuff is actually going to be um, the bone here of the humerus, right? So here's a little humerus bone and it kind of goes in out of socket there. Notice how the, the actual bone of the humerus goes pretty far out of the body. Like it's, it's pretty lengthy there, you know? It's not just like sitting on the rib cage. It kind of juts out a little bit and then it gets connected there to all these other components like the clavicle, a chromium process, um, the scapula on the back and then there's some some muscle here on the back side which kind of wraps around that that bone so i'm just going to kind of simplify it here but one of the interesting things to keep in mind actually also is understanding how the bones of the arm here um, as you kind of work your way down to the elbow and stuff they kind of work at like a hinge so you can imagine there this uh what's going on here with the arm is one you're going to have the ulna bone which is going to kind of hinge here Right, so it's going to hinge at this uh, the end here of the humerus. Uh, let me go like this. Like that. And remember that the ulna bone connects again at the pinky side um, of the arm. And so this is kind of how you know, like, okay, cool. If this is the pinky side right here, that means that this side right here, as we have the arm kind of facing down, this is where the radius is going to kind of situate itself right here. So you're not really going to see it too much. Unfortunately, the bones are going to overlap here, so it's kind of hard to visualize. But again, just understand here that the radius is always on the outer side, on the side here uh, where the thumb is facing. So that's kind of there. Okay, so there you go. That's kind of that bone structure. Um, we have here these epicondyles, which is going to be the uh, medial and lateral epicondyle. Here, you're only going to be seeing the lateral one. And let's start applying now some, uh, some muscles on top of all this. All right. So again, we're going to have that deltoid. We, we just talked about it earlier. Um, the deltoid muscle is really cool because the deltoid basically wraps around the bicep and the pectoral muscles on the torso there and kind of create this nice shape. So even if you're not muscular like this character here, you'll still see a very clear definition of the deltoid, but you'll also see now the definition there of kind of the, the skeletal anatomy a little bit more, right? So you're kind of really seeing here how that pectoral muscle kind of tucks in and then you're going to have um, all of that stuff there. Now we'll have the uh, the bicep going in here on the front side. So kind of stretching out and because of the way that remember she's having her arm like this, um, you're going to see there not too much flexing, but really what we're going to be focusing on is more of the anatomy, uh, the skeletal anatomy to kind of carry this structure here. So you can kind of look at how she's not really muscular, right? So we're going to rely on that, but regardless of her not being muscular, there's still a lot of interesting shapes that we can pull from to draw our character's arm. So let's go ahead and do some of that. Uh, let's see here. And welcome in. Welcome in everybody who's coming in right now. Appreciate you guys coming in here. Uh, drawing dynamic poses is so much easier than casual poses like sitting, standing, like in normal life, waiting for the bus. That's good to hear. Um, I, think, I think poses are... I think oftentimes I find that people have difficulty with drawing dynamic poses because I actually think that having really good dynamic poses means that you have to have a good understanding of things like 3D space, 3D volume, um, but also having a good understanding of things like um, perspective. Perspective can actually play a very big role in how you can create a realistic dynamic pose because if you don't have a good grasp of the perspective, you'll end up sometimes making stuff that just looks and feels a little wonky, you know, kind of unrealistic in some ways. Um, so here we're going to have the, um, the, what's it called? The ridge muscle there. 
well, wait a minute. Her arm is twisting this way. Oh, oh, her ridge muscle. Sorry, I'm drawing her arm kind of going up like this. Her, so this is where the muscles are important here. Um, when you have, when you have the twisting right here, you're going to have basically the combination here. You can actually see it on her. The combination there of the extensor muscles and the uh, ridge muscles kind of twisting forward uh, this way and kind of creating some of that that shape right here of the arm and then under and then on the back side right here is going to be the uh, the flexor muscles and that's on the pinky side again so we're not really going to be seeing a lot of that uh, but again you're going to have all these little muscle groups here kind of chunking together and then you have like this nice little volume or this nice little space there this pocket for how the uh how the elbow kind of just sits there so you have here like the tendon of the tricep right elbow and then some bumps there you go nice nice and easy mm. since her forearm is supinated like you were talking about earlier i wanted to know back to the shape yeah it's it's like once you start noticing these things and you're like okay well what's going on here um her arm technically is just in supination um, it's just twisting this way, right? Um, and so her bicep is actually not going to be super long there. There's going to be a little bit of a gap right here before it touches down there. Um, that's going to be more of the tenderness section there of the bicep. And that's kind of interesting to know because now you guys are seeing it. You're like, oh, okay, KSM. I get what you're saying now. Subtle details in the biceps can, you know, help you inform what the heck is going on with the, with the pose, right? Um, how do the bones work in, in two different size people? Like taller women seem to have a longer arm proportion wise to the body. Maybe it's only the personal impression. That's a good question. I think the skeletal anatomy doesn't actually vary too much between different people. Um, what will really alter between people is going to, I think personally, uh, or maybe not even personally, but just from studies, um, what will really alter people's structure is going to be the um, is going to be the body fat distribution and also muscle ratio. That's really where I think you're going to see larger changes in the body, but the actual skeletal anatomy is going to remain fairly the same, right? Um, and yes, this video will be on YouTube. So you guys can check this video. All, all of the videos that I have will actually be up on YouTube. Um, I upload all my tutorials and stuff over there. So Check me out over there, guys. And uh, I have a new video coming out tomorrow, actually. So appreciate everybody who comes out and stuff uh, for the YouTube videos. Um, the arm of the reference looks weird, doesn't it? Does it come from the the twist of the arm? So her arm is not actually twisting. Um, interestingly enough, I'm pretty sure her arm here is still parallel. So there's not a lot of twisting going on. I think it just maybe looks a little weird because she's just skinny, um, a very skinny, low body fat there on her arm. But, you know. Again, it's it's all stylistic. And this is why I always tell you guys, don't don't feel like you have to copy a reference because sometimes the reference is not as appealing um, stylistically or design wise as if, if you were to just maybe push some of the shapes yourself and come up with some interesting stuff. Not to say that she's not um, she's ugly or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like sometimes it's better to come up with your own designs and use the reference purely as a guide as opposed to copying it exactly. Um, it could also potentially be Photoshop. That's true. Um, really quick guys, I do run ads on my stream every hour and one's gonna be running right about now. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy, uh, today's stream. Um, I do run ads on my stream to keep, uh, to keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. So thank you again for those of you who are here with ad breaks. Um, was hoping you could explain how the bootcamp works. Um, yeah, yeah. So good question. So for those of you who are interested in how the boot camp works, it's actually really simple. Uh, basically, every time that I go stream on Twitch, I'll be covering a new topic with you guys. And you guys can actually go over to my Discord channel where I where you can grab all of these resources for free. I'll show you guys really quick. Um, 
these are free to grab until the end of my stream. So you guys can grab today's worksheet, uh, which I think is actually this one right here. Um, and then you can actually grab what I covered last stream, which is going to be the arm anatomy here. Uh, and then you can also grab this cheat sheet that I made back in 2022, which has more of the details of the arm anatomy if you're looking for that in particular. So all of these are going to be available to grab. And then all that I say is you come out and join in, uh, watch my streams while I'm live, and you'll be able to follow along. Now, if you want to be able to grab all the previous days of my boot camp, uh, what I would instead say is to actually subscribe to my stream because everybody who's subscribed basically gets access to all of the previous days of my boot camp. So everything from day one um, onwards where we cover things like this, like the skeletal anatomy of the head, how to draw the head and the neck. Um, and then you'll also get access to the cheat sheets and stuff. So you'll get all of these cheat sheets that I have here. Um, that I make, um, as well as some older ones from last year as well, too. So you'll get all the ones from last year. Um, so everybody who's subscribed gets access to that. But if you want to just grab stuff um, for free, um, all that I say is you come out and just watch my streams while I'm live and also um, leave a follow, um, you know, leave a follow out here, support my streams. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that's okay with you guys. Again, I try to make everything as free as possible and as accessible as possible. Um, but also, you know, I, I, I do, I do this for a living, so <laughs> I need to reward my people who subscribe and, and support my streams as well. But I also don't want to gatekeep education from you guys because I know how that feels like. I know what it feels like to, um, to feel stuck and feel like you want to learn, you want to learn and get better, but you can't afford to, right? So huge, a huge reason why I even stream on Twitch is um, just so that I can help other people, uh, like myself who, who are hungry to learn, eager to grow, but don't have the means to maybe pay for a class or pay for books or, or any of those things. Right. Um, any tips for the skull? Um, yeah. So we actually, <laughs> the first six days of my boot camp is literally dedicated to the skull. Like that is actually... Uh, mostly all that we cover, uh, on, on, um, on those, on those days. So I would say, take a look at those days. I'll be, I actually have a video. I think my most popular video right now on YouTube, um, the one that I uploaded recently actually talks about the head tutorial and stuff. And, and I go over things like the skull. So yeah, I'm, I'm only not going to talk about it today just because of the sake of, you know, we're focusing primarily on arms today and I don't want to overwhelm. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm everybody, but here's a, here's my YouTube channel. If you guys want to take a look, subscribe there. Um, we hit 4k, we hit 4k subscribers like last, last week. I'm, I'm still fairly new to YouTube, so I do apologize, but I'm, I'm trying my best. Um, place to pay for them. Uh, my country is very hard to come by and it's normally very expensive. Yeah. Again, that's again, one of my big things is I definitely want to try to help people. All that I ask is if you if you do want to grab my stuff for free, um, just come out and watch me while I'm live. That's all that I ask. Um, if you can do that, and eh, then the then the the resources are yours. You know they're they're free to grab. Okay, cleaning this one up. Give me a second. Uh, multiply, and let's do a little bit darker here. Is my podcast coming back for a second season? I wish. Maybe. The only problem I had with the podcast was I felt like it's really hard to monetize the podcast and to actually do it for a living. Um, and so it just wasn't, I was losing a lot of money, to be honest, um, to do the podcast because I had to host the podcast and I had to do all of this other stuff for it. And so it was more of a passion project than anything, but if I can get sponsors for, for this, for the podcast and stuff, um, then I might be down to try to do it again. But it's, it was, I had to stop it because I was unfortunately, yeah, but I did like it. I did enjoy doing the podcast. Um, and then also really quick, I was going to say something and I totally forgot. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I forgot, unfortunately, sad. Um, but let's go ahead and do, I'm going to color out the arms again here, right? So I'm just going to keep coloring these out for you guys until you guys can visualize them yourselves. All right. This is, this is what we're going to do. 
Um, you can post your, you can host your podcast for free. So, um, so yes and no. So the problem was that I, my podcasts were very long and also, um, I wanted to host them for a long, uh, permanently and also have multiple episodes. So usually free podcast, uh, hosting sites will have, will give you a cap. So after you hit the cap, then you can no longer um, host for free. So that's how they all work, you know, because that's how they have to make money and stuff. Um, that's how, because it costs it costs money for businesses to also host um, data and host stuff like that all the time. And so they had to find ways to um, to monetize it. And one of those ways is uh, doing stuff like that, like a free model kind of thing. Armpit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How's it going? Welcome back in, Ratlord. Can we get a shout out for uh, Ratlord? If my if any of my subs are here, um, love the form of the deltoid into her tricep, kind of long and and elegant. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy how long her uh, deltoid is, or like how much you see of it. Let me give you a shout out, Ratlord. Um, let's see here. How's it going, Tara? Welcome back in. Or Tara? I always forget. Um. But yeah, um, again, welcome in everyone who's coming in here today. I hope you guys have been enjoying today's uh, stream so far. We've been covering a lot of uh, topics out here and um, I really do hope it's been helpful to you guys to see these things. Um, I think it's fun personally. I, I like I like doing um, I like doing these type of studies and stuff on occasion just to kind of remind myself of um, of what the heck is going on with the arms because sometimes you know you kind of lose you kind of forget what's going on and so it's good to really have like a refresher good to have a refresher of the anatomy so it, it actually helps me out a lot as well um to to do these things and with you guys Mm. Okay. So many muscles covered on today's stream. Sheesh. All right. Uh, what is my current dream of life? Um, I would say, um, uh, my current dream of life would be to produce and be a showrunner for my own show. That would be my huge dream. If I can make my own anime series one day and have that be a show that is as hype as something like Castlevania or, or Legend of Korra Avatar or anything like that, I think that would be like, whew, that's like my dream, dream come true right there. But I think I'm a, I'm a very long ways away from, from producing something like that. So in the meantime, I'm just, you know, continuing to develop my skills, sharpen my, my knowledge, and eventually we'll get there. Um, someone earlier talked about clothing. So we will be talking about clothing. I don't know if we'll be doing that in this boot camp, but I'll show you guys some examples of stuff that we've done in the past um, where we actually go over some clothing folds. And so... Um, here is an example. We'll be we'll be doing something like this probably later in the year. Um, we'll be talking about um, how to do the clothing folds, how to also simplify clothing folds. So like, how do you go for something that's super detailed to a more anime simplified style that focuses on larger shapes, like small, medium, large shapes. Um, and so we'll talk about all that stuff eventually, just not uh, not today and probably not until we cover some anatomy, uh, the rest of the anatomy. But don't worry. Stay tuned. We will cover clothing eventually. All right, guys. Um, we got a Jason redemption. All right, I got you. Uh, hey guys, it's Jason here, and uh, Ratlord's asking or wants me to say, "Damn, girl, you got that one prominent brachial radialis." Sheesh. There you go. <laughs> Uh, and any, anyways, um, the, the yellow muscle there, that, is, that those are the flexors. Um, so you'll see a little bit of the flexor muscle because you're seeing the palm side there of her wrist just a little bit, um, you know, just a, a little bit there. 
But anyways, I think this is going to be solid there for the arms. Um, how about, uh, so I guess what I'll do is I'll close off here for YouTube. So you guys are watching from YouTube. Thank you again for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's uh, video and, uh, uh, like, and subscribe and, and catch me on the next video. All right. There you go. Now, now that I'm done with all the YouTube stuff, guys, let's go do some stuff for ourselves. All right. So now what I'll do is I'll draw some poses from imagination with, uh, with the, the remaining time that we have today. Hopefully that's okay with you guys. Um, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that and how to draw some like arms and stuff from imagination just you know because I think it's good to have references and it's good to practice all these technical things but I think it's also good to um to work on just trying to see if you understand after understand it yourself right because let's be real here you could imagine part of the reason why there are tests in school is because if you don't ever practice the things that you're learning and stuff you're not actually going to remember it now here's an example of this how many of you guys in the chat how many of you guys in the chat have, have binge watched a bunch of youtube tutorials before right you're watching all these videos 10 minutes an hour long and stuff and you're like yeah i get it i totally how to know how to draw uh, how to draw hair and how to draw face now but the moment you actually try to do it yourself you're like whoa yo this, what the heck's going on right put a knife in the chat if you've ever done that before right because just because you consume the knowledge it is not until you actually try to apply the knowledge and practice it yourself that you will actually see how much you've retained right so let's go ahead and practice some of these things out today. Um, we'll do a few just kind of random poses and all that stuff. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All okay? right. We might, we might come up with some cool stuff and we might not, but I'll show you guys kind of what I do here um, again to, to really just kind of come up with some ideas. So let's start off with the basic torso first, just to kind of um, lay it all out. And you know what? I feel like we haven't done. Hmm, I'm trying to see what pose have we not done yet. So we've done a few back poses side poses let's do a a side like a, a side arm pose maybe that could be fun so let's do that one really quick so here's like that rib cage uh torso stuff like that boom 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 okay so we'll keep all that nice and simple right we're not i'm not focusing too much on uh on the torso today so we're gonna leave it nice and simple out here and um let's get into talking about the arms so here um some simple gestures that i like to do for when it comes to drawing arms and stuff is i like to keep it really loose and so here if this is like let's say the front side of the arm i'm going to just add in some rhythms right it's so going in like this adding in that tricep rhythm there uh adding in some of that forearm and just kind of finding in here that flow of the arm to kind of help me uh get a little bit of a gesture going so I'm imagining here for this pose, maybe he's doing like a tricep pull down kind of thing. So he has his arm really pulling down there, a little bit of tension. And so we're going to see some of that gesture. But if you, if you paid attention, um, it was kind of really quick what I just did, right? So for the gesture was just like this, this, boom, pop. And that's it. Easy peasy, drawing the arms. That took me like, what, two, two seconds to kind of lay that out. Um, but again, a lot of that comes from, uh, practicing these things out and understanding how the basic shapes work to be able to then simplify it out to more, uh, more kind of simple gestural techniques, right? So now if I want to, I can go back in here and let's actually add a little bit more definition. So maybe let's go in and, um, add a little bit of the muscles there on the side, right? So here's all that, the muscle groups that we talked about earlier. Um, here we'll have the teardrop shape there of the tricep going this way. A little bit of a tenderness mass there, a little bit of the elbow on the backside, right? And now you can kind of see, look, we're, we're establishing an arm here, right? And we're just doing it from um, our, not, it's not necessarily imagination because again, I'm working on utilizing the forms that we've already established. So it's, it's again, I think it's more about memory and invention than it is about imagination, right? I'm in, I'm visualizing a couple of set of structures and then from these structures, I'm going in and just kind of laying out general details that I like, that I want to keep. Uh, but I've never, I've never, I don't have a reference for this, so I'm just kind of coming up with it as we go right now.
Working from Visual Library. Exactly. There you go. Um, thank you again for the prime sub earlier, uh, Jack. I might have missed it. Also, guys, thank you again for all the subs today. We're very close to our sub goal, by the way. We're two subs away. If you guys didn't know, um, every 10 subs on my stream actually unlocks an art resource for everybody to download out here. So not only does subscribing help me and also benefit you for subscribing, but it also helps everybody else out here on the streams because then everyone gets a little bit more free art cheat sheets and resources out here. But again, no pressure. Um, just letting you guys know that we do have that sub goal out here. Uh, it's, it's very helpful. My anatomy has definitely improved with these lessons. Yes, let's go, Arashi. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, I, I, you know, I like personally, you know, hearing that you guys are, you know, finding these things beneficial and stuff. It makes me feel good um, and lets me know that I'm doing um, a reasonable job here with, you know, with giving you guys these topics and stuff. Um... Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yo, Shinigami. What the heck? Thank you for the two gifted. Uh, to Looney, Raccoon, and Asat um, Akastri. And with that, guys, we did hit our sub goal. Thank you so much. I uh, really do appreciate that. And here's what I'll do for you guys. I'm going to give you guys another sheet right here to grab on the Discord. Uh, again, guys, please, if you did get gifted a sub, claps in the chat. Or actually, let's just, let's just clap in general. Everybody type CLAP in the chat right now. For hitting that sub goal easy peasy um and i'm gonna give you guys i believe i already gave you guys this sheet so i'm gonna give you guys this one instead all right so go grab this one on the discord channel it'll be under the same section all right it'll be oops not here it'll be all the way here we got another cheat sheet these are free to grab grab them now grab them while they're still hot three two one Hey, there you go, guys. We got this sheet right here. Okay, make sure to grab this sheet, guys. It's, again, a free to grab sheet. These are literally as free as they get. All right, but thank you again to... Uh, <laughs> what is that emote? What the heck? Um, grab them now. And yeah, thank you again for that um, for that gifted sub and uh, helping me hit that sub goal. Sheesh. All right, um, we're going back here. So we're going to have the arm. So I'm imagining here the arm is pulling down um this way and so if that is the case we're gonna have here the the flexors going like this and the extensors uh on the top there and then we'll have the arm going in like this and so you can kind of imagine what what this guy is doing is he has like his his hand right here right you can kind of imagine it now so he's kind of pushing down there oh, that's pretty good so again, I'm using I'm using not necessarily um, my imagination here. I, I don't have a reference, but I am using my understanding of the anatomy and the forms, working off of basic simple shapes that we drew first. Which again, I just use this gesture, like this simple line uh, that we drew right here. This little line right here turned into the muscle anatomy that we have here um, on the on the left side now. So um, I feel like that's really the most important thing is understanding the understanding what's going on with the anatomy to be able to then simplify um simplify it and then later if you wanted to make it more complicated right so it's always that fine balance i think of of working on complex versus uh, simple shapes okay nice and then let me go ahead and color this one out so that way you guys can see it a little bit better Yeah, did, did that make sense? Did this uh, this little like demo that I just did right now? Let me know if that makes any sense. So again, I, I wanna um, I wanna reiterate that when it comes to learning anatomy, it's not about knowing all the the names, right? It's not it's not about knowing all the all the terminologies and stuff. I think generally it's really more about understanding why the muscles do what they do and how they interact with each other. Uh, thank you for the prime sub adrenaline. Shoosh. Okay, but well, let's go ahead and color this one out really quickly. I think I have. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. All right, we're good on time. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna speed run the colors on this one. All right, guys. Okay. 
And we'll do clipping mask. Deltoids. Here. Okay. And we'll do tricep right here. Mm-hmm. Bicep right here. Brachialis right there. Uh, ridge muscles right here. What else are we missing? Uh, extensors right here. And then last but not least, flexors on the back. And there you go. Easy peasy anatomy. All right. That was fun. So many arms today. Is your dog eating his own hair? No, no, no. I threw a treat over there. All right, guys. Come on. My dog is civilized.